Hello everyone, it is time, 2021, I feel like it is time to return for another Game Room Tour. The last one I did was in 2018, when I first moved into this space. It is now 2021, new shells have been added, some things I've gotten rid of, a lot of new things I've added, so I thought, you know what, it's time to show some new things off. Um, again, this is a modest kind of game room. It's it's not too big. It's uh, as you can see, it's not ginormous. There's some ginormous game room tours, but I have a humble collection. I thought I would show off some things that are very um, I'm very um, attached to in my collection that I've been building up for many many years. So, without further ado, we'll just go in this corner and we'll go through more of the books. Uh, media first and we'll make our way around. So this will be a very long video. Um, I'm not sure how long yet, but I will talk through some stuff. When it comes to games, um, some of the, the books and stuff here, I'm going to, I won't point out every single thing, um, but we will point out kind of the major stuff to talk about. I'm not going to talk about every freaking video game there is. So uh, here we go. So we will start on the top here. We've got Mario, Donkey Kong, Luigi taking the top. These are kind of taller figures. They're uh, about 10 inches, I guess. Donkey Kong might be more of a foot uh, there at the top. Uh, and then also, all these figures I've got here, you can see everywhere, you gotta keep a way, there's gotta be a way you gotta clean these things. So the way I actually clean them, I hide them back here. If you can see um, the makeup brushes. These makeup brushes are amazing. Let me take one out so you guys can see. but. Get makeup brushes, they're freaking uh, incredible um, for cleaning off and getting in the weird spot. Like, look at this, like, all this. I, I gotta actually do this. Please don't mind the dust on Donkey, uh, as they say. But uh, it's a great, great, great way, along with um, getting some uh, can of air. And then this actually came in one of my figures I got at one point. They gave me, or no, it was uh, one of my acrylic stands. Those clear, you can actually see them over there for my amiibos. Uh, it came with this feather duster, so uh, almost looks like a like an omen, like a bad omen you'd see in a forest. But there's that. Um, down here is my Zelda shelf, and you'll see that as the collection goes along. I have different um, themes on all the shelves. You got to have a theme, um, so I like to organize things by theme. So here's my Zelda shelf, and um, in the back is uh, that came from the Breath of the Wild, along with um, the sword is the Breath of the Wild limited edition um, here. Uh, I just, my newest pickup, um, I'm getting back into actually collecting figures, was this Minish Cap here. Um, I, I, I really want to get all of the links, the different links. I'm missing, um, I don't know what I'm, I'm missing, like a major. no, I got the Majora's Mask one right here. I don't know which one I was missing. Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I need a Breath of the Wild. So they have a really good first four figures of that, and I might end up picking that up, but uh some of my favorites are this Majora's Mask one right here that came with the, um, let me get focus here, that came with the Majora's Mask 3DS remake uh, special edition, and this Wind Waker special edition. These both aren't Amiibos, and I actually like that they're not Amiibos. They're a little bit larger than Amiibos, and I'm glad that was like right when Amiibos were really popular, and um, they actually did just regular figures on them. They look cool. So there's the Zelda shelf. I think you can see that. And there's a little Midna hiding back here. You kind of have to make the most of <laughs> the room that you have. So I kind of have like the Breath of the Wild. Oh, there is Breath of the Wild Lake back there. <laughs> I lied. I think I have them all. I'm probably missing Adventure of Link, whatever. Oh, I even have... I'll show that later. Uh, I do have the other Link hiding in my game room. But right here is my game guides, game video game guides. And... Um, gaming magazines. So I actually had a billion gaming magazines and I got rid of all of them. Uh, I sold them at the flea market or to somebody my dad knew or something or I sold them at a yard sale. But I had all these um, game magazines that got rid of them because there was literally, I had like tons of them. So I did keep the ones that I was more um, connected to and, and wanted to like look back and um, kind of, uh, I knew I'd want to look back someday at some of these that I have, so I kept all those um, still here, but um, see like these old, these are like October 98, stuff like that, but 
I loved, and I had a subscription to, it was Expert Gamer, it turned into uh, One Up Magazine, uh, I forgot what else they were called, but all these classic, this one is one I loved, a game fan, uh, I didn't get, I went, I didn't have a subscription to this, but I remember finding this at like a, a flea market or something, it had Crash Bandicoot on it, but great art, you'd find really great art um, drawn by uh, the magazine editors and stuff of, of these magazines, you'd get on them and they'd have posters on them, some had demo disc. So, um, yeah, I, it's kind of a bummer I got rid of these, but there was way too many, and I think there's a place that where they've archived these, so if I ever want to go back, I can see them. Yeah, Tips and Tricks was another one. So it had all these, like, these actually had, um, I don't know if it's this one, I mean, it has Tips and Tricks. I, I think they had, uh, some of the sections actually had codes on them and stuff. You can actually get codes and stuff uh, for games. Codes are kind of dead now, but it was fun back then. And game guides are kind of hot right now. They're really, really hot. Uh, they almost sell. They're, the market for them is going up just like the video games are. This is At the time of recording, all these video games, and I'll get into it, are at the highest value I've ever had um, my game collection. It's, it's unbelievable. But got to have game collections. I do want to point out the worst collection. I mean, these are all Final Fantasy. I, I wanted to get all these back in the day when I started playing those. In the 2000s, I went back and kind of rediscovered those king, um not Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy games. Worst game guide of all time, Dragon Quest VIII. There are parts in this when you look up stats for certain swords or how to get stuff or whatever, there's just question marks. And it said, oh yeah, there's spoilers, like you have to go online and look it up. And that was 05 that came out, I believe. And it was like, uh, I'll just, why do I need the guide then? So one of the worst guides of all time. I think Final Fantasy IX also stands out as a classic, terrible. Oh, that's 10. That's pretty war out. I took that back and forth places, but to buddies' houses. But Final Fantasy IX is a classic one because you had to use Enhanced by Play Online. You can see that at the bottom there. And that was a service that you had to log into. It would say stuff like, um, oh, you want to know what the stats for this? You have to go online. It was another thing of like, what are we doing, guys? Like, what a worthless thing. I want to have everything at my fingertips. But um, a lot of cool guides. These are um, probably my most sentimental things that I own, and these are the Pokemon Official Nintendo Player Guide. And I'll actually pull this one out, I think. Um, so if you see, I put blue on there. So I got both. I got two of these. So I got two of these because on the front, no, in the middle, yeah, there's a sticker sheet, and you can actually put as you go along. In my OCD, you know. I had to do this. Where is that? Oh, okay. I went too fast. You could put the sticker when you got the Pokemon in the Pokedex. So, oh my gosh, yeah, I had to do that. I wanted to collect every single freaking one. So, as you can see here, I collected all the freaking Pokemon here. And you got to put the sticker. And as a kid, like, that was freaking awesome. Also, on one of these books, I think it was the other one. Yeah, this one I think was fine. The other one, milk got spilled onto when I was a kid. And I was so bummed. We wiped it back you know, as much as we could, but at least this one's good, and yeah, the other one has, like, uh, red on it, so that was my Pokemon Red version, I wanted to have, collect them all on that one, too, uh, so there's that, I'm not gonna have the free hands to do it, so I'll have to put that back in a little bit, and then I wanted to get the Majora's Mask guide, that's here, too, um, sealed, because <laughs> I just was into, when that Majora's Mask collection, which my favorite game is Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask, I really wanted to get everything I could when that, that remake came out, I thought that was so cool, um, so there's that. Coming down here are my art books, um, video game stuff, and there's other media in here as well. So all of the Zelda guides came out. Uh, I didn't get, I think there was a limited edition of these guides. I don't really get the limited edition for art books thing. I'm not really into all of that. But there was one that I absolutely had to get. F and I think it's this one. Yep. <laughs> had to get the collector's edition of this because it was the old first Zelda game in the old Nintendo, like, plastic, ginormous NES. Uh, that's what they put, like, the dust covers. Yeah, so uh, that one was definitely worth getting the limited edition. As I was saying, I don't get the limited editions. But uh, there's that. There's the Skyrim. This came with the Skyrim limited edition, one of my favorite limited editions of all time. But yeah, the Zelda books. The major ones I like to collect, uh, so I don't have too many. Uh, Naughty Dog stuff, the Art of Last of Us. I, I want the Art of Last of Us 2. was mixed on the game at parts, but, man, the art is unmatched. Uh, Lost Encyclopedia. I just picked this up very recently. These two, this McDonald's book, which is all of the 
um, old collectibles, the Happy Meal toys. Uh, they're not too game related, but whatever. And then this, I don't even know if I can show this without getting freaking flagged on YouTube. Um, but this is the Xeno Gears here. I'm gonna I'm gonna cover up as much as I can. This is the Xeno Gears Perfect Works. If you just look it up online, because I can't show the cover, because YouTube will ban me for life and throw me into jail and prison forever. But this actually got translated by somebody online. Because it was Japanese only. Somebody translated it and put it on PDF. Like, you could just download it. But then somebody uh, bookbinded it on the site called Lulu or something. Um, probably not legal, and I think they're probably still being uh, sought after for this day by the Square Enix police. But I bought that up the second I saw it. Very freaking happy to see that. Um, one of my favorite art books of all time is this Perfect Works. Crazy detail. I love that. There's so many hyper crazy details in that game. Xenogears Perfect Works. Please check it out. It is the cream of the crop when it comes to that stuff. This I was actually reading through. This is a Power Rangers Ultimate Visual History. And this is kind of all of the um, uh, history of Power Rangers and stuff. It is a big thick book. There's tons of different... Um, images and set images on there oh it's amazing uh, i haven't got all the way through it and then these are <laughs> these are the essential evangelion chronicles i really this was really cool and this is uh goes into a extreme detail on all 26 episodes of uh the evangelion tv show anime i haven't opened this one yet uh because it, there was just too much detail i was trying to watch through it and read after each episode and it was too much for me but i will uh, one day go through that, or maybe I should get, leave it sealed. I don't know. Maybe it's a rare book now. And then this was just a basic. Um, my my uh, I was back. I was really into like game um, creation back in the day when I was a kid. I kind of wanted to get into it. I, I was back and forth. I wanted to create games, but um, it's cool just to see how the programming process and this and it was as cool as a kid me getting to see. I'm gonna try to focus on that a little better. Um, see all this stuff, but. Um, See all the creators, there's interviews, but there's one reason I kept this book. I got, you know, through the ages, see if I can find it. Yep, right here. Behind the scenes. I don't know any of this ever existing outside of this book. I would love to find it. Dark Cloud 2 is one of my favorite video games of all time. And there's behind the scenes of, like, models and stuff. And I was like, yeah, that, this freaking rules. There's still, yeah, look at all this stuff. Dark Cloud freaking 2. So yeah, that's why I had to definitely, definitely get that. So there's that. I'm going to, again, I have only one hand, as they say. You can only carry two things with two hands. Is that a saying? That's our books and stuff. Uh, and then this last one, just uh, Nintendo. I I talked through all these because there was not that many, but the um, pretty cool. Yeah, the, the NES thing kind of just shows box art of all these NES games and talks about them. Pretty cool. Down here is kind of like my catch-all shelf because, as I said, I like to keep themes in crap here uh, with everything. This, These don't really have themes. I couldn't really put them anywhere, um, so they kind of got stuck surround, uh, excuse me. <laughs> surrounding Tycho? Trico? Yeah, Trico from The Last Guardian, so they're just kind of protecting him. That's the protecting Trico shelf and that came with the limited edition this is actually what you might be asking why does batman look freaking weird uh the reason he looks freaking weird is uh they based the color palette off the nes batman game so when it was in a night setting because the nes is limited color capacity and trying to like back in the day you had to show graphics differently and whatever else they made it that midnight palette that purple and that teal color oh had to get that that's a NECA. Uh, action figure, and then that's from the Bioshock collection, or not collection, collector's edition from back in the day for 360. There's good old, uh, another NECA figure um, with, uh, uh, oh my gosh, I forget his name, I'm so embarrassed. Uh, Gordon Freeman, I'm dumb. And then Earthworm Jim, the classic. And I forgot, I, those are both NECA, the um, Freeman and um, Earthworm. I don't know if he was NECA too, but pretty cool figure. And then down here is more art books. This is kind of the large shelf for things that stick out that don't really uh, make sense here. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a catch-all. This Metal Gear thing is unbelievable. It's uh, Metal Gear Solid 1 through 4. All of the art, ungodly amounts of art. 
Same with this. This is called The Sky, The Art of Final Fantasy. This is Yoshitaka Amano who did all of the art, all those cool old Final Fantasy uh, covers and the, the logos especially that are very memorable. He made that and uh, did all the art. Incredible artist. Incredible. I think there's three books in there. There's three ginormous thick books. Great, great, great. The Last Guardian, of course. And this is a cool one of Neon Genesis Evangelion. There's more just art stuff in there. Um, yeah, these are very long books. They stick out past my... Oh, I guess these can be pushed in. I don't know why I didn't do that. But um, And then this one is a cool book. This is an Allison Castle. Uh, Tashin. Yeah, it's Tashin. Uh, these books, um, Stanley Kubrick, they have all of these screen caps, and it's beautiful cinematography from the Kubrick films. But they do that for, I think there's a Disney one, and there's, might be James Bond they have done one on. Incredible coffee book. This thing is thick. They are kind of expensive, they're kind of pricey, but they are unbelievable archives of that stuff. You want to look those up. Uh, the Watchmen, I just actually got this from a thrift store. I've heard some stuff about it. I watched the HBO show, and I knew it was, uh, you know, very famous. Picked that up recently, had a great time with it. Uh, this was a cool book, again, I found from the thrift store. I have to show this. Um, but they, it's just all this weird pixel art. I don't even know who made it. There's also some explicit images in here, too, but it's all weird, crazy, like, pixel art. I don't even know really the name of it, and it's just, it's a really weird find, so I had to pick that up. Um... This is a funny thing. The letters from Stephen. Uh, this guy came to our elementary school. And I actually looked him up the other day. He's still living. He's still traveling the world, I guess. Um, but this guy traveled um, for the first solo walk. He walked around the world. He like hitchhiked and did all this stuff around the world. Um, pretty cool guy. Um, pretty cool story and stuff. Last of Us stuff. There's more Last Guardian stuff. And then like these mini books came... You can see back here, it's kind of dark, but this was all with like limited editions. Uncharted 4 is limited edition, Last of Us Part 2, all that stuff in there. Classic. Yeah, Final Fantasy 7 Remake. These are all these little books that came with it. And then I've got my old CDs uh, that I couldn't just part with. I couldn't, uh, I know it's very dark. I want to make it a little bit brighter there for you. I'm going to shine a light. But these are all old music CDs, and this is the ones I kept. I threw away some, but. Modest Mouse in there, Gorillas, you gotta have them. Um, but I love all that. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, you gotta be, you're attached to some of those memories you have when you got the CDs and stuff. I can remember where I got some of them, so could not part with them. You just can't part with them. But that is that shelf. More just media books. Everything from here on out is mostly figures and video games. But that's just kind of the appetizer to get us started. Next up is the above the couch area here so i've got these cool little playstation pillows this is the main place this is, this is where the magic happens when i'm in the game room chilling just this uh couch here and got these pillow covers off etsy i think i got them and these are just playstation little i just like cool little playstation logo stuff here got a little cup holder here and then on the side i've got what looks to be a mess but is actually very organized it is a Little, um, this goes over, and I actually had to like, paper, not paper clip these, uh, clothes pin them in to my couch. But if you have a different size, this is, has a very thick like top. You can get these off Amazon or whatever, and it organizes all your remotes. So all my remotes are in here, uh, PlayStation 4 and stuff. There's a battery charger, so like, if I need to like charge my controller instead of having a cord go all the way across here and pull it, and I get mad and throw my controller and it breaks my system, I can just have everything right here um, charge right from that. So I just love having that immediate power source in there. Very helpful. But we go up here, and this is a... All this is very recent. I added these... Anything that's up high, uh, these new shelves are all brand new. And I wanted to just... This before, I, I think even in the first video, I'm not sure where they were. These were on like the bottom, and they were kind of crunched. I hate when stuff's, you know, squashed together and you can't really see it. So I get, I had I use this longer shelf to display all my Metal Gear Solid Player It's Kai along with some extra. There's a Nendoroid and a Figma or a figure. I think it's Figma. And I forgot what these are. Metacom, I think, figures right here of uh, Metal Gear Solid. And in the very back as the centerpiece here uh, is the Metal Gear Solid 5 Limited Edition. 
and that was one of the hardest limited editions uh, for me to ever get. They took forever to put it up. I was losing sleep trying to pre-order it, so very happy to get that, and it's just a one sixteenth scale or something, but you can move the figures around, or the, the fingers around, which when friends would come over, they would just change it to middle finger, so thank you. We would just do that. When we'd go to everybody's house, we'd change it to the middle finger when they weren't looking, so thank you for that. But all of these, um, at the time of this video, and the last I checked, uh, these are very, very rare. They're hard to come by um, for the Metal Gear Solid 1 line. So when they did Cyborg Ninja, there's Snake back there, as you can see. Let me focus on him a little bit. But he's back there. Meryl's in the back. We got uh, Liquid from Metal Gear Solid 1. So I wish they would have done like some of the bosses, but they never, uh, you know, Raven... Um, Revolver Ocelot from back then. I think that, that would have been awesome. But here's what we got. Um, yeah, I, I really love all these figures. These are these are my favorite lineup that I have. But um, yeah, some of these are very, very rare. The Metal Gear Solid 1 line especially. But um, yeah, Konami, I think between that and breaking up with Kojima and all that, I think it just made stuff a little hard for them. So I love this uh, Raiden one because I have him kind of like having a sword off of his foot. In the game, it's very hard to pose. That that was the best I could do. But, and I think the Solidus was um, at the time the most expensive figure that I, I'd ever got. He was over a hundred. He was like one hundred ten dollars or something. Which now I'm paying one hundred thirty or forty for freaking uh, Final Fantasy VII remake figures. Which in six years, would I come back and be like, that's all? Now you're paying three hundred dollars for Final Fantasy VIII remake figures or something? I don't know what's going to happen in the future. But that's all of the Metal Gear Solid. Five lineup. I love this freaking shelf now. Um, just gotta display it. And then you gotta on the Nendoroid, you gotta get a uh, snake here. You gotta have him uh, smoking, a, smoking a cigarette with his polygon face from the Metal Gear Solid 1. Thought that was so cool. I love when they do old graphic polygon figures like that. You'll see that in a little bit here for Final Fantasy 7, but very happy with the Metal Gear Solid shelf. For this, I think I'm going to try to stand up on this couch if I fall. It's your guys' fault. But this is, you get to see my reflection here too. This is a little shelf. Um, I wanted to display my old consoles because they're not hooked up anymore. I'm using, you know, I use emulators if I want to. And one day when I have a, you know, Game Room 3.0 tour, something like that, I want to actually have these hooked up to an old CRT. I think that's the way to play them. That's the best way, I believe, you should play them the way that it was intended to with the graphics and how they, they, they display on a CRT. So one day, you know, but for now they're kind of like in these locked cages just chilling. Then I took the Diddy and Donkey Kong Mew. It's one, of my, it's one of my favorite games of all time, Donkey Kong Country. And I wanted to just put that with the console. Like, hey, this was a main game from it. Just to kind of spruce up, whoa, hit the camera, spruce up this display. So there's the Super Nintendo. My, and these, I do want to point out, this is important because it's the first one of its kind. I did kind of point out these are all the game guides I had from childhood. But everything that you see, and I'll, I'll mention if otherwise, if I bought them after the fact. But these are my childhood consoles that I have. And I'm, I'm very, very happy to have, have those. I'm very lucky um, in a time that there was times I did sell some of my games. And I knew, I know of friends that, that kicked themselves still to this day that sold their consoles, sold their games. So... Just very uh, blessed, I feel, to, to still have these. And my parents didn't throw them away or say, hey, you put them in the art cell, whatever. Like, they were, um, you know, they uh, they helped me keep good care of them. So, appreciative of that. Up here are these. These just had, like, a pack of Pokemon cards in the newer ones. And I just, I loved, I, I really, when I saw them, I was like, they're, they're like, 10 cents each. They were made out of freaking aluminum water. They're cheap, but I love the look of them. I mean, they're so... And what happened was I got these like from Amazon because I bought the cards with them, and I saw this at a yard sale. The lure, I think it's the lure ball. I could be wrong. And I was like, okay, let's get it to make it four, you know, two and two on the the shelf. So I'm glad I got that. Again, that was like fifty cents at a yard sale. So who cares? And they look cool. And I think there's official ones that look way better, but um, for what I need, and they're just going to be up here. They're cool. This is the. NES, and this was actually my mom and dad's Nintendo Entertainment System. They used to play video games um, before I was born. They did when I you know, was a kid. They would play with me and stuff. But before I was born, they would play the heck out of this. And I'll show the game they played in a second, at least my mom. And I think even my grandma played this. Um, 
the NES. So this is their original system that they said I could have. And that's the old blaster too. Uh, from back then we played duck hunt and stuff when I was a little kid. And right here I, I said I gotta get all the Zeldas. Well there was uh, the NES Zelda. I love, love, love that they did the 8-bit in 3D. That is such a cool freaking amiibo. So I wanted that to you know be with the NES. I thought that was a cool little ornament decoration or whatever there. And that is the this side of the wall before we get over to the next side, which is above the closet door. And up here, it's gonna be very dangerous and I'm probably gonna fall. Again, I'll you know please donate in the comments below your condolences but up here I was running out of room and this is why all this is kind of new this freaking NES all these things because I was running out of room because the room is not that big I've made the best uh, out of my situation here but um, I decided to put these above very tall above the windows and this shelf is themed with two of my childhood favorite shows of all time and that is Batman and Power Rangers. So these are newer from DC Collectibles. These have shot up in price to the point where man now I would have liked to got like the Riddler and some other ones that were just the animated show not the new series or whatever else. These are Batman the animated series like the, the original uh, 90s um, show. I was obsessed with this. I loved the look of Batman. I loved the look of the show. The show still holds up. But I did get Joker and I got all these. And then I'm using, and that's what I said with that feather thing, these acrylic. I uh, zoomed out when I showed that. But these acrylic little shelves, and you'll see them over here with the Power Rangers as well. They have these acrylic shelves and that's, that's able to give me a whole extra row on there. So um, check those out. Those are on Amazon. You can get different sizes and stuff. But yeah, there's the Batman stuff, and then here is my Power Rangers. I got, I, I'm, I'm not sure who the Megazord was made by, but all of these are figure arts um, figures, and I have the entire lineup of the Rangers, so happy I have that. And one day in the Game Room Tour, this is a, you know, foreshadowing. What I would love to do is these are all the newer figures. I still have all of my childhood figures of Batman and Power Rangers uh, that I kept and I would love to have a shelf of those in the game room. Stay tuned for game room three and how many years that's going to be. But I want to display those maybe even next to them or on the same shelf or have their own vintage shelf of, of these old figures. I'm, I'm just, uh, again, lucky I have those, but I can't display them. I just don't have enough room. So that is the Batman and Power Rangers. These are all I talked about as a little kid. So... I uh, love these new uh, figures uh, from DC Collectibles, I think, that made all these. And I would like to get more, but I want them to not be a million dollars in 2021, along with everything else. And that is that. Next up, now you can really see me. What's up? This is um, one of a couple posters in this room. You'll see the poster wall in a little bit. This is actually, um, I believe, from Best Buy. Yes, when they, I think when they were doing the E3 event, I want to say, yeah, when they were doing the E3 event, one of the things they gave away was this mask, the Majora's mask, and what happened was, you can actually poke out the eyes, I don't think you, you can even see it, where is it at, okay, it's right near the corner of the eye, like I'm going to point on the camera where it's at, right here. There's a little dotted, like, you can punch it out. And you could actually use this thing as a mask. It came with a string. I don't even know where that thing is, but it's stuck on the sides on somewhere. It kind of poked through a hole as well. You could actually wear that mask as, like, a paper mask. I thought it looked cooler as an actual poster. So that is an actual mask you can wear um, that cause, would cause um, Termina to turn into chaos if you put it on you. Uh, but I have it just hanging on my wall. But, again, Majora's Mask favorite game of all time. You might see one other clue of that in the room. To move down, what is this theme? Um, this is actually the uh, platforming section. And I'm trying to think, I, I paused for a second because there was something else going to be here. I don't know if there's something else I'm going to be getting soon. 
Yeah, I think I might be making room for something. Yeah, I think there's something coming out soon I wanted to put there. But for now, I've got Crash Bandicoot. I've got Ratchet and Clank. I actually had this entire... Oh, his arm fell off again. I had that glued because he fell down from this on the ground. And uh, it looked like I'm like five stories up the way I pulled that camera back. But um, he fell and broke his arm, so I have to fix that once again. So just um, Photoshop that out on your guys' monitors. You'll not don't notice that. But I had the entire lineup of the Ratchet and Clank figures, but there was like side characters I don't even remember their name and I didn't really care for, so I actually sold those <laughs> and kept the ones like Quark and Ratchet I really liked. So that was the thing. I actually had um, back in 2020, maybe 2019, I had a purge of like video games and figures I didn't really care about. I got rid of a ton. So some of the stuff you saw in the last game or tour, I might not have in this one. But I have bought, I think, new cooler stuff so that I ca that I care about because again with MySpace and my motto with all this stuff is it's got to matter it's got to um, everything that's on here might, has some sentimental value to me or I want it to take up space because space is so incredibly valuable anything you see I, I care about <laughs> now to this day uh, to this point so yeah there's that and these I think are both first four Figures this Crash and the Spyro, and they are so detailed for the money. I think they both were only like 60 bucks. Uh, I think I might have got one for Christmas and bought the other one, the Spyro, I think I bought on Amazon. They're so detailed, and they're after, they're made from the um, remakes, um, Crash Bandicoot and Spyro that came out a couple of years ago, which I thought they did an incredible job on. So, great job on that, great job on the statues. These are amazing statues. I love these things, so... They did an amazing job. This is also brand new, newer. In this corner is all of my um, Nintendo portables. So all of my Nintendo portables I gave the own shelf to. And this is, in the old video, I think I had them all crammed over here and some were hiding in the back. And again, I wasn't happy with that. And you'll, you'll see why I changed some stuff around but I want to give more room to them and just kind of separate them by generation. So from the bottom to the top, we'll just go down here and, and I'll show you guys and talk through some stuff that, that, that I think is pretty cool. Um, so this is the Game Boy shelf down here. I'm stuck in a corner now. Can't get out. And uh, these are all the Game Boy models um, that came out. I think the only thing I don't have, which it's I'm only doing the American stuff, the stuff I grew up with as a kid. I think there was a Game Boy Light is what the name of it was, and I think that was Europea. Europea. European. European only. So there's that. But I have the original Game Boy back there. And I have a, uh, talking about like getting rid of stuff. So I have that original Game Boy. I forgot where I got that. It's not actually mine from a kid. So what happened as a kid? What happened with my Game Boy story was uh, I had the clear, there was a clear uh, Game Boy. I just noticed there's like ice cream or something on here. Oh my gosh, or some other foreign fluid. Just ignore that. Oh my gosh, embarrassing. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I think some drink got spilled on it. Yuck. There was a clear Game Boy, uh, the original fat like um, Game Boy model. That was my childhood one. I think I still have it in my parents' garage. Cannot find it to this day. I'm very sad about. It. I still kept the box and all that stuff. So that's a big bummer for me. But until I get that back, I just have this, and then I have a story for that. But um, I have a tons of story. This actually was in an auction that I won um, when I got my first job, and there was this Game Boy stuff and some games, and I saw this, and it said, you know, Game Boy in the box. I was like, that'd be cool to have the box. I, I would like the box of the original Game Boy in my collection. And I just suspected it to be, you know, the pictures weren't really that good, and I was like, okay, whatever. I show up this Game Boy... And I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to try to take this out so you get a clear view and don't see the freaking drinks build. On here, I now have a plastic. You can get these plastic uh, protecting things, not only just for the games, which I'll show you guys in a second, but you can get it for the consoles too. And I got that very recently because I've had to keep that thing kind of in my closet very packed away and protected because that is a mint Game Boy. That thing doesn't have a scratch on it. And when I opened it, I was just in shock when I won the, the auction or whatever. It wasn't for too much. This is back in 2013 is when I got this. Um, but I opened it up. The original styrofoam's in there. 
There's plastic on everything. The Game Boy has not a mark on it. It's mint. It's never been played. And I was like, oh gosh. Like the cardboard is not bent. There's no scratch on it whatsoever. So I put that away and just kind of put it in a bag. And I was like, oh God, this thing is mint. So very happy to have that in the collection. This is a recent slash old pickup. This uh, came with Game Boy, uh, this Game Boy Color came with Pokemon Yellow back in the day. It was a kind of a tie-in pack between those two. And what happened was I was with my cousin and we were at the mall and I left mine in along with my copy of Game or Pokemon Gold, came back out and someone had stole his car and that was inside of it. So I had lost that forever. But what did I do as a kid? I kept that box still. And on eBay, just a couple months ago, I, re- I repurchased this original um, Game Boy that I had as a kid. So I was so freaking happy to get this back. And then I still have the box. So i um, very happy I kept the box and still, but I, I have both now. And that's another thing too. I'm a, I'm a completionist. I want to have the box. I want to have the manuals and stuff. I'm very, very particular on that stuff. But the Game Boy Advance, love the Game Boy Advance. There is the Game Boy Camera, which has some crazy freaking um, effects in there. It is a silly game. I, I, it's the first kind of jokey kind of game I had ever played in my life. Um, it's not a game, really. It's just you take pictures. Um, but I, I would love to take that out with like family when I was a little kid, and we'd take pictures and put little funny noses. You can put stamps on people's uh, pictures, and it was so low, low resolution, but it was so funny and fun. Uh, back in the day, I remember going out to eat and uh, with my parents' friends and, and with friends or whatever, and we would just play with that forever. And then that Game Boy Color, I think my dad, that purple one right here, um, my dad found that. He's a worked as a um, postal worker, and he found that on his route, just on the ground, <laughs> on the sidewalk. So, finders keepers kind of deal. Game Boy SP, the best, the absolute goat when it comes to handheld design. Um, I wore this thing out. I played it so ungodly much. And that's the thing too is I like my stuff when I buy it. Like this, I didn't want to have 8,000 scratches on it, this um, this Game Boy Color. But this actually has, I don't know if you can see on the hinges and stuff. Yeah, I think if I focus here. Focus. Focus. It won't focus. Okay. Um, even on the hinges, I have like the, the plastic kind of peeling. The color is kind of, because it just it got bent from where I played with it. I had fun with it, you know, and I almost show, show those as like, I'm proud to have that in my collection that it got used and you get to see like, I, I think even here and here there, this is my original Game Boy Advance and on the top, like, I don't know if this is just from not cleaning it. Maybe that's part of it too. There's like wear on the shoulder buttons. There's like, you know, some scratches here and there. I kept stuff in, in pretty good condition, even though I used it a lot. But there's, there's signs of use. There's signs of, like, I had fun with it. So I actually appreciate that more than just a perfect condition thing all of the time. Down here is the Game Boy Micro that came out after the DS. And I remember getting it, even as a collector, I was, like, as a kid, I kind of liked collecting Nintendo stuff. I was like, yeah, I really want that Game Boy model. And I got that for Christmas one year. It was 100 bucks. Um, and it came with face plates and stuff, but I wanted to display that. That thing hurts your eyes to look at. It is so ungodly tiny of a screen that barely even worth it. But that is the Game Boy section. Uh, this is the you know, most nostalgic I am for that, for that section. Next up, and this gets into the funny part of collecting uh, for, or for my collection. This is the Nintendo DS part. And I got this, this is my launch model Nintendo DS. I remember having my dad take me to Game Crazy to get this. But very nostalgic over that. And I still got the box back there. As you can see, the kind of theme is like keeping a box for them and then put the put them loose up front. But I only had when I started this shelf. I was like, well, I better. This is now the time to kick me in the gear to do this. Um, I only had that model of the DS. I never got the light. I never got the I. I never got the the IXL. The reason was like started getting to middle school, high school, and stuff. I I was so mad for some reason. They felt like every year they put out a new DS. It was like. This DS Lite came out, and it had way better um, light on it. I was like, why didn't you just do that a year ago? So out of, like, almost protest, I didn't buy these. So these are, this year, I bought this DS Lite, this gray one, and I bought this DSi. Now, this DSi, I remember, 
Um, I had an ex-girlfriend or whatever, we played Pokemon. So I remember actually playing on this model, and I really liked this uh, DS. I, I love the color and stuff on it. I thought it was just, I love that color and stuff. So I did pick that up. I was like, well, I, I, I kind of remember that. The DS I had, I, I just remember being mad that I couldn't get it as a kid. So um, here I am. I, I wanted to get that to kind of make this shelf look a little bit more full. Um, and then I think that's uh, the DSi XL is the only thing missing from the DS collection of models, I believe. Yeah, but it is expensive. And I want to complete with the box because I'm a loser. But that is the DS. Great system, crazy system with the, the touch controls. I remember showing this off to family. I remember going around to all my family at their houses and stuff and just showing them showing this, this thing. I, I just thought it was an unbelievable piece of technology in 04, but there's the DSi. I'm nostalgic about, I, I said nostalgic over this, I'm nostalgic, nostalgic over everything. Next up, we're going 3D, baby. We're going Nintendo 3DS, baby. Now this one, uh, at the time of release, I was in college and about to get my job, my first job, first big boy job, as they say. And I had more funds to throw around. So that 3DS uh, is a launch model as well. Um, liked that turquoise color. I think there was it launched a turquoise or black was the two colors it launched with. But I like the turquoise color. And that's up here up front. Uh, it, again, has definitely been played with. There are um, marks on that, too, on the screen and stuff. I took this everywhere with me for Street Pass and stuff. But uh, there's the original 3DS there. And next up was, and this kind of worked out. I think I would have been the same with this, with the 3DS, had it not been for special editions. I was a sucker for special editions of games. And the first that came out was the 3DS XL. But when Ocarina of Time Remake came out, it came, there was a special edition with the game with this. And I was like, oh, okay, well, there's that's how I'm going to get it. So there's the 3DS XL. After that, and I don't know when the 2DS, I forgot when that came out, but uh, after that was the t um, the new 3DS, and that was, or the new 3DS XL, sorry, and the Majora's Special freaking Edition came out, so perfect time to get that, and I love that little the front with the, the mask on there, and I think these are very, I think the Majora's Mask one, they are up in price still, they hold their value, along with a lot of stuff Nintendo. And then right here is the 2DS XL, and I actually had that in the box for the longest time. But it's weird, when you take those out of the box, they're not in plastic, there's no like things showing you open the box. Uh, so that is a brand new Mint 2D XL that's never been played. Bought that for 100 bucks during a Black Friday when I was in Collecting Frenzy in 2013. Um, so I did not care, and I still have the box and all that stuff for it, but that is a Mint condition, never played 2DS XL. And yeah, that's the 3DS shelf. The What I'm missing from this collection is the 2DS XL, which is never coming down to price. I've waited forever. Uh, it's a bit too high for me still, and I'm waiting for that, and I don't know where I'm going to put it. Maybe move that over to here and put them both on the bottom. We'll see, because these things are so bulky on the side. So it's going to be interesting what I pull, I pull out of my uh, magic hat to make that happen. But that's 3DS there. And next up is Switch, which is pretty bare for the moment, but I think is going to become filled soon, hopefully. And it's just that I just have the little grips you can put on the ends uh, there. I don't even know what those are kind of for, to be honest. I don't know why they did it that way, but there's that. And then next to it is the kind of... Um, put the, the joy cons in it <laughs> this is so like recent and current that we're playing this it's no there's no reason to go over it but put the box in the back to keep with the theme i'm glad that fit i was like oh gosh is it gonna fit in this little ikea this is an ikea dolt oh i forgot the name it starts with a d uh, dolt it might be dolt um shelf but you can pick those up at ikea love these things and then this is a uh my newest pickup and shouts out to my friend Kenny. He managed a pre-order one for me. They kept going off sale, but it's the Instax printer. And you can hook this up to your 3DS and print pictures from your Switch on your PC as well. But I wanted it for Pokemon Snap. I want to print out some Pokemon Snap pictures like I did back in the day on the N64. But this the only difference between this and the other, you can get a you can still get the other ones for like a hundred. I think this was twenty or thirty more bucks. You've got this kind of silicone uh, Pikachu Pikachu. Pikachu 
case. Was a sucker. Got to get that. And um, here's the thing with collecting in general, all this stuff. <laughs> my friend Kenny, he's like, ah, I'm debating. I'm, I'm going to leave that sealed. I'm going to leave it whatever. And he leaves certain figures. And that's fine. I think there's people that like that. But here's how I personally like to, to view it. I want to enjoy it. You know, like I'm not going to be here forever on li- in life. <laughs> so there's some stuff. If I get an extra copy, I'm going to leave that sealed. Like I'll show you some some examples maybe even of that soon with some of my games. But for the most part, I'm opening up that. I'm opening up action figures. There was a period where I didn't know what to do either with my figures. But I want to enjoy stuff. I want to enjoy whatever. And I think this looks so cool in the shelf. I want to print out some pictures on it. Um, so I opened it up, but I kept the box. I keep stuff in great condition uh, in case I do want to sell it someday or whatever else but that is my philosophy when you see my other stuff I, I want to keep stuff mint I keep it very well taken care of but I open it I want to display it on a shelf I want to have fun with it I paid money for it let's let's go so after all that I gotta show the next coolest part uh, trash can I had to be careful I didn't show like an address on there or something but I think we're good yeah but trash can you might want to check them out Next up, um, let's start from the bottom here. And start from the bottom in here. Uh, now we're here. Remember that song? Right here is the more, another newer thing. And that was last year, me and my wife were going to go on vacation. Well, COVID happened and it was an absolute disaster. So instead of, you know, using the money towards that, we got her some stuff. She won a spending spree, and I won a spending spree. With the money we'd been saving for this big trip, we were excited about. And we instead, uh, one of the thing I got was this gaming PC. So um, it's a 2070 Super is the graphics card. I don't know anything else about it. <laughs> I think it's a terabyte drive, and then I forgot what else it had in it. But uh, this is where I stream. I do our, the, the Hangout streams where I do the reaction videos, all the stuff happens here now. Um, but, I, but I've really enjoyed having a PC. I haven't had that in so long, but it's been great for streaming and all that stuff. And then I've got my camcorder uh, here. That's why I use my as my webcam. You're going you're to see the behind the scenes of my stream setup. Kleenex, you know, you got to have Kleenex. You got those boogers, classic. Uh, and then we got some uh, router back there. But And then over here is uh, you can just get these little clips and they clip to your desk. And I've got my headphones on them. That might not even be in picture, but, or, uh, might be a little blurry, but there's that. So, and then, oh, also these Samsung monitors ruled. I got them on Black Friday sale. I think it was like 250 bucks. It was nothing. It was 4K, uh, 120 hertz or something like that. But, um, uh, really happy to have this monitor looks beautiful, uh, when playing some games. And then I've got the cheapest keyboard on planet earth from Amazon Cheapest mouse on planet Earth that has lasted way too long for how much I paid for it. It is a fake razor. It's called um, a taser, I think. <laughs> it was on Amazon. I paid nothing for it, and it is not broke. And the battery lasts, lasts for 3,000 years. So um, I love that mouse, and it sucks. But I would suggest if you can find it, find it. <clears throat> Excuse me. A lot of talking. Next up is the Nintendo shelf up here again very high up on here so I gotta like struggle to get up here but um yeah there's Blastoise my favorite Pokemon is Blastoise I got this recently this thing the Snorlax from there was a store near me in Cincinnati in the Dayton area called Original 151 and it has tons of Pokemon stuff if you're in the area I really highly suggest checking it out, but I got the Snorlax in a little, like, he's kind of in like a, what's that called? Frick. Diorama, like, I don't know what the word for it is, but he's like chilling in this little Pokeball. And it's like a little planetarium. Is that the, is that the word? I don't know, but he's in that. I thought it's cool. These are figure arts, Mario, Yoshi, or, yeah, Mario, Yoshi, Luigi, these are great, but they're actually the first figures I've got since I've like really started collecting outside of like old figures when I was a kid, but I don't think you can even see it on here. But the Yoshi's like nose, whatever it was made out of, is more of a cheaper plastic and it actually has like signs of like fading and stuff on it. It's weird. It's almost like a the stuff they made old bath toys back in the nineties or something on. 
So they kind of cheaped out on that. I wish they wouldn't have done that, but they did. And you could also buy all these separately, these um, parts of the diorama, diorama. So you could buy like the green pipe, the freaking um, piranha plant, uh, the blocks, the coins. They, were, they came in like these extra almost DLC packs. Um, but that I thought was very freaking cool. Um, now I'm staying on my chair and rotating here for you guys. But uh, awesome. The only thing I didn't get from this line was Bowser because these were like, I want to say 30 bucks a piece. And Bowser was like 65. Like he was ungodly at the time. And I still don't have him. He's still too expensive. And I was like, eh, I'm not really buying, buying that. It's too much money. Um, I'm trying to hold still, guys. I'm sorry. I'm like stuck. Um, right here is from the old Nintendo, this Nintendo Club. You actually had to exchange points from buying games to actually get that, or you could find it on eBay now, whatever. But uh, I think my dad found that at a half price and contacted me. He was like, hey, this thing looks cool. And I was like, oh, I actually want that for my display. So I got that. Uh, that's a Figma Metroid. Pretty cool. Um, the Mario and Peach there, I normally wouldn't get. That's from Mario Odyssey. The I think they have uh, one for Bowser, too, where he's in his little marriage, marriage uh, attire for Super Mario Odyssey. The reason I got those is me and my wife actually dressed up exactly like that. Um, one year uh, when that game came out, I thought that was a fun little ideal. But finding this suit that Mario had, a white suit, is the hardest thing going through thrift stores and Amazon and whatever to get what I needed. Costed $8 million. So Mario looks as rich as he is if he found that attire. And this one is another Club Nintendo. I remember <laughs> at my job when I was back into like collecting and trying to collect, that Luigi, I was like, oh, I was asking my friends, like, should I get this thing? Should I, whatever? And they're like, no, you're going to, I don't know if it's worth the points. And I had all these points and whatever, and I missed out on it. And uh, I don't know if, I, th I think I had to buy on eBay. Um, or they finally came back and I used my Nintendo coins and was able to get it. But uh, I thought that was cool. It has the ghost and stuff coming off. But that is the Nintendo shelf uh, up here. I thought I have... You know, I had to get my Pokemon on here and a little Nendoroid with the little tiny people I thought was fun. But And this is actually from the Pokemon Red and Blue games. It's actually Red, I think that is the name, or Blue, or whatever his name was. I think they were different in each version that you had, but I wanted to have, I love Pokemon Red and Blue. I want to have that original character. So that's that. And that is the Game Room Plus Nintendo area. Next up, I might need to freaking stand again. Yippee. Uh, I'm going to fall. But this up here are my special edition figures, statues, I mean. Uh, we got Uncharted 4 over there, Skyrim, uh, Limited Edition, one of my favorites. I was so ungodly excited for Skyrim. Still love that game. Haven't played it in forever. Uh, actually, it's been a decade since it's come out since I'm doing this video, but... Uh, I love that the statue and I love the book it came with. I thought that was so cool and so detailed, highly detailed there. But um, And then the Death Stranding Collector's Edition, which I couldn't pass up when I saw it. I was even joking before they showed it, when they showed the game, I was like, I bet they're going to have that baby as the statue. And I was freaking right. He actually lights up. Um, it is so creepy. It's so weird that I thought it was so funny they actually went for it um, that I had to get it. So that's the baby. And it came with caution tape that actually goes around the statue or um the suitcase which i just remembered i have i've got to step off this chair i'm gonna die um i actually have it is the one item in my collection newer thing that is so big i cannot display it i actually have the suitcase from death stranding but it's so ungodly big and then that that tape goes around it if you want or whatever i just kept it sealed but <laughs> It's out there inside of the box for Death Stranding, which is also massive. I do not get collector's editions anymore, except for like if a Zelda one is really cool, the next Kojima game I'll get because I'm a sucker. But outside of that, maybe a Last of Us thing. I, I've been getting the special editions, which is the one, the art books you saw earlier, the little tiny ones. But I don't really do. There's too many figures. There's too much stuff taking up my room, like taking up room in the small place. I can't do special editions anymore. Also, what came with the Death Stranding, you can barely see it, but it's a little Luden's, the little Luden statue. Is kind of, it's kind of like a charm that they put on a phone or whatever. So there's that. 
And that is it for the top part. Now we get to the games. Finally, we get to the games in the game room door. <laughs> well, there's game consoles first, but up here is the, and I'll open this up first. I love these. These are Billy Book shelves from Ikea. Let's talk about these first because this, uh, this is these are very, very cool if you're a collector. These Billy Book shelves. And then I forgot the name. It might say even on the inside. No. Oh my gosh, what a loser I am. Okay, it actually says it over here. We're going to run over here for a second and help you guys out. Um, this is the Mor Morladen. Morladen. Yeah. Glass doors. I think this looks so classy. So this, let, well, let's step back too as we talk. This is my entire game collection. And you'll see there's some spillover right here. For the most part, this is every single game f that I own fits on this one shelf. Everything from NES all the way up to the PS4 um, era games here. But uh, I love how classy this looks. One thing I do do is this is the first time the wind, they, they're kind of cracked, the blinds. Keep those closed so there's no fading. There's no uh, fear of fading. So I kind of, uh, you know, got to close those up because I do not want fading on those game box and stuff. But I'm opening up today. They're gonna, they'll be fine for a little, little while for the video because I want you guys to see it. But first up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to rig this up to where I don't die. Wish me luck. I'm standing on a swivel chair. But, let's open these doors up again. But, these are my original NES games. I would say 95% of this is my parents uh, that they let me have. But these uh, are my only thing in my collection that are loose. There, I do have like loose Game Boy games and stuff. But as far as collecting, the majority of the stuff I have is complete in box. These are all... Um, loose because I had them loose when I was a kid. I actually still have all the manuals. My parents kept the manuals but threw the boxes away when they bought the games. Um, and I, I kind of did that when I threw away some of my Game Boy boxes. When I was in middle school, I actually kept the, the, the guides still or the manuals. But most of this is that. Some of these I actually bought after the fact because I wanted to complete, like I wanted to get Final Fantasy. I wanted to get all those. Um, but um, most of these are the original from my parents. And remember I said, when my parents used to play games before I was born, I think when she, my mom was pregnant with me, she would play this game. And that is Rolling Thunder. It even is shaped differently. Um, I don't know if they actually had, it's not an official licensed cart or something for NES, but I don't know if they had to go behind Nintendo's back. But uh, Rolling Thunder uh, was that. And that's got a pretty good soundtrack that gets stuck in your head, but... It's an okay game. But that is all my NES games. Uh, not much to talk about here. Um, there's that Batman game. I think that Batman game actually is the first video game I ever played in my life. So I think that was like 92, 93. I played that when I was like 2 or 3. That's my entire NES collection. Hope I think everything's in focus. Looks good. Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure it's focused. Over here is my dream class, dream class, Dreamcast collection. I got the Dreamcast not at launch. I got it pretty late in its life cycle. Um, <laughs> by late, I mean it was no longer there. I think it was 05. It was actually my first eBay purchase through my dad. Helped me set up an eBay account, whatever. I think I used his. We bought um, my, we bought uh, the Dreamcast on it, and then I bought Shinmu. And it also came, and I, I actually ended up selling it. I wish I wouldn't have, but it was just too hard of a game. I got uh, Space Channel 5. I remember the eBay seller threw that in as an extra. I thought that was really cool uh, at the time. But I got Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2 there, Shinmu, uh, and then, of course, the classic Seaman. And I do have this complete in box with the microphone, but it's through the years, this happens to everything in this temporary life but the microphone there's a green thing to the microphone and it is absolutely just worn to bits just from like aging and just kind of just fades away i don't know how other way to explain it 
that's the Dreamcast, and then you got the classic web browser. Got that. This actually is a recent pickup. I wanted to get all the Mario games I did have, and I picked this up very recently. This is a recent purchase, New Super Mario Brothers 2. It wasn't much money. Hadn't played it. I think I played it recently, and I was like, I can tell why uh, I never played it. It's not really that good of a game. Here's my 3DS collection. I do want to point out I do have two, three games that are sealed in my 3DS collection. And that is Metroid Samus Returns because it was so late in the, the generation. I said, I'm just going to emulate this, but I want to own it physically. So I've never opened that. Uh, that was very extremely late in 3DS's life cycle. The Switch was coming out soon or was already out. That might have came out like 2016, 2017. I can't remember. Um, but I almost feel like I even had the Switch at that time and I did not care to open it at that point. Um, Professor Layton games are really fun. You're about to see my DS collection down here below. But I love, 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 love the Professor Layton games. Nothing too crazy there. Oh, the Xenoblade, actually. I have four sealed games. Uh, the Samus Returns is sealed. I have that Xenoblade Chronicles uh, 3D that's sealed. And the um, Legend of Zelda, A Link to... Or no, not A Link to... Yeah, A Link Between Worlds. That is sealed because when I got that collector's edition, that's what... Yeah, it wasn't Ocarina of Time. It was Link Between Worlds, that, that 3DS XL. I messed up. I bet you guys are screaming in the comments. Delete your comments now. Update them. I'm apologizing. But that came with that 3DS XL. But the game was already in there digitally on that 3DS XL. So... I wanted a physical version, so I, I pre-ordered also, again, that was my first big boy job, I pre-ordered too the physical version of A Link Between Worlds. So I have that sealed, didn't need to open it, just played it digitally on the 3DS. And the other uh, sealed game I have is Triforce Heroes because I think that game sucks, but I wanted to have a complete Zelda collection of video games, so there's that. And then up here, if you know what this is, this is crazy. This is actually the Game Boy Player disc. The Game Boy Players are, are pretty pricey. I think they can go for some money, but this disc, they will sell their firstborn for uh, on eBay at the time of recording this in 2021. But um, I got that. Yeah, I have the player and stuff. I got back in the day and happy to have the player or the, the disc that actually makes it work uh, as well. And then uh, one other thing was my, my buddy Derek. Shout out Derek. He got um, me this from Japan, and it is actually such a weird thing. I just really want to show it. And it is uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion, a Sega Saturn, Japanese Sega Saturn game. When he first showed me this, he said, because he went on a, a um, vacation there to Japan, and he got this back. He brought this back as a souvenir. And I couldn't even figure out what it was at first. He's like, I don't even know what this is. And yeah, it's a Japanese Sega Saturn game. I paid 50 yen for it. Um, but it's a Sega Saturn game for Evangelion. I thought that was awesome thing to bring back. And he actually brought me back one more thing I'll show you. I thought it was really cool to have in the collection. Next, we will go to the NES, SNES, and the start, but not the end, of my N64 collection. So right here in the corner, you might say, hey, that's not a freaking Nintendo game. That is a freaking Shadowless Charizard you are correct. So I actually have all of my, maybe that's a whole other video, but I actually have all my old Pokemon cards in a binder in the closet um, still. But in there was the original big three, I, uh, Venusaur, Blastoise, and Charizard. And I got them graded very recently. You can see that video on the channel of where I kind of blindly looked um, at these because uh, I didn't know what I was going to get back from PGA, what they were going to rate them. But these, it was only a three, I think a, f yeah, four is there, and then an eight is for Blastoise. But you know what? Like, it didn't really matter to me. I just really wanted to have this for collection purposes. Like, that was my original Charizard as a kid. That was my original Venusaur and Blastoise, you know. Um, Blastoise, I was surprised at the eight, but yeah, I was just happy to have those kind of encased. <laughs> Saw them as almost laminated, like, please protect these cards. So uh, that's them. And then back here, let me move Charizard over and I'll just block Donkey Kong because whatever, Donkey Kong. Back here is interesting. So when I started collecting in 2013, because I wanted to only collect loose NES, there were some 
that I was willing to pay up for to have a physical version. And one of those was Metroid, uh, the Super Mario Brothers games, and the Zelda games. And this one is the the one I want to talk about, and that is um, new or uh, just Super Mario, new Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers One. This again is in all of my boxes are in these plastic sleeves. You can get them from eBay. Let me zoom out here. Whoopso. But um, the thing that was cool about this is not only does it have, it has like a, a venture, like some store called Venture. And the price on it at the time was $24.99 or something was the price right there, right? But you open this up, and I don't want to open up because I just, every time you open these up, you kind of damage the cardboard. There is a receipt in here for the original purchase, the per- person that bought this. I bought this from eBay back in 2013, and I actually looked it up before I started this video. With the game, I had to buy the game. I didn't have just the cart for Super Mario Brothers. Just the cart and the box totaled sixty dollars, and I remember cringing, hating myself. I think these these games are going for a lot more at the time of this recording. Again, it might be twenty twenty four, and everything is worth two bucks. But um, yeah, I was just really happy to have uh, to get that, and I had to to cringe through that at the time, but. Happy to have that. I love the sticker. I love the history of it and who you know bought it at the time. Um, but the one thing, even back in 2013, I had you know big boy job, didn't have much responsibilities at the time yet, wasn't married yet. Even at the time, Super Nintendo games were unbelievable back then. They were so hard. Sorry about the glare. It's the sun coming in here on those. But yeah, I got to fix that because you're never going to see it. <laughs> never going to see the collection you're trying to look at. But... Um, even then, they were ungodly. I could not buy them. So what I did is I actually had um, some of them were more affordable. But like Super Mario World, I wanted Chrono Trigger, of course, Earthbound. I thought it would be cool to have. But they, they were so expensive then. They have went up even higher. It's impossible to get into Super Nintendo collecting. It's just, I think it's past its past the point. If you wanted to get in, I'm sorry. If you wanted to collect loose, I think you can still get a, away with it. Excuse me. But complete in box, good luck. But um, this Donkey Kong Country, I actually pulled out recently to look. Because what happened was I had this game loose. I'm not going to pull all the way because it's kind of a, a chore. But I had that loose because it came with the Super Nintendo when I got it as a kid. It came in the box. But just like that Pokemon Yellow, and I'll show you in a second, I had to buy it separately because it did not come with the complete in box. just the cart. So... Um, when I was recollecting stuff, shout out, I want to shout out, and we've talked about them before on the podcast, but Arcade Legacy, it's in the Cincinnati area. It's an arcade, you can pay and just play all day and stuff, free arcade games. Just pay one price and whatever, and they've got tons of games there too to buy. And they had this. Well, I looked at the box, and it was mint. There's nothing on this. It's brand spanking new. And it was so awesome, and the price was so good, I was like, yeah, I'll take that. So I got Donkey Kong Country, the box, finally, and then I just resold the game go towards it well when all this collecting frenzy went back up i was seeing that a lot of fakes and reproduction boxes and games were starting to flood the market i went back to this just the other day because i was like crap did i buy reproduction boxes it was so mint it was so minty fresh not a mark on it and sure enough no it was a legit copy like i looked up online and like to see if something's reproduction it's not it's a legit donkey on country so happy to have that and then the rest, um, well, there's some I had to buy, whatever, Donkey Kong Country 3. I had to complete that. I didn't have that at all. I had played it, but um, some of these are in very poor condition. It's just hard to keep as a kid that young, these boxes. That's why they go for hundreds and hundreds and thousands of dollars. Uh, some of them $1,000 because the conditions, it's hard to keep that cardboard box in such great condition. And then this right here, at the time of collecting was the only game I uh, I had to cringe the most when I was collecting. So when I started out collecting, I mentioned, I said, I will not go over $100. So back in 2013, the Super Metroid, it's complete with the maps, the booklets, the cart, everything. I had to pay like 110 after tax, and I was cringing through doing that because um, that was over my limit. I didn't want to pay a dollar over $100. But I wanted, I really loved the Metroid series, wanted to have them complete in box, wanted the collector in me, wanted to do that. 
but um, I got that, and I think that at the time of this recording, again, um, is 500 to $700, depending, because I have the maps and all the inserts and stuff, but unbelievable. The Super Star Wars, actually, I thought was long gone. We went through, my parents had an old storage we went through and emptied out, and this was in there. I actually had to take an iron, if you want to look up on YouTube, shouts out to people that actually had this trick. This box was so warped, so destroyed, you couldn't even close it before, and I actually need to get a plastic cover for it eventually, but it was so destroyed, I had to take an iron to it and put a shirt over it and straighten it out, and that actually worked. But uh, bad condition, and then as a little kid, I actually wrote on the box. That's how I knew it was the one that I had as a kid. It was back there, too. But And then that Zelda 2 is also very rare, but and that Toy Story has a giant line through it. So pretty cool. And you actually get to see down here, the reason being, they just kind of gave the box at Blockbuster. But um, that is an old Blockbuster box. When I, I actually bought that game from Blockbuster, and they gave me, um, or no, um, yeah, they gave me that box and that, but then I also have uh, what's in there is a Star Wars Rogue Squadron or Episode 1 Racer. Uh, is episode one? Yeah, it's Episode 1 Racer. That's what it is. <laughs> Star Wars Episode 1 Racer. And it was loose. So I was like, well, I have this empty case, so that is what is in that box. I still to this day don't have an Episode 1 Racer box, but, but I do have the Blockbuster box, which uh, I'm actually very happy nostalgia-wise that I have that, but very weird. That was a weird situation. Over here, Banjo-Kazooie, Donkey Kong. Uh, this Paper Mario was one I bought after the fact. Everything else that you're seeing here, unless I mention it, was, like, again, Super Metroid I bought collecting and Legend of Zelda, The Link to the Past. All this other stuff is my original stuff that I got as a kid, unless I go on and drone on and on about it. This Pokemon Snap is pretty cool. Um, we just did a stream for the new one, me and my friend Kenny. You can check that on the channel. But in it, I actually go... I opened this back up, and I had some of the old prints that I had um, from Blockbuster, so I was just so happy to have those, and I thought it was really cool. That Paper Mario is kind of in rough shape, I think. It's in a little rougher shape, but that one is one that is... Un yeah, you can see down here in the corner. No surprise, there's a little some bending in it, but it's very ungodly rare, so I'm just happy with the price going up that I actually even have it, so... There's a start of the N64. There's Venusaur chilling right here. We'll move Venusaur over, over to this side. Um, Pokemon Stadium uh, stands to this day, or not to this day. <laughs> I declare, <laughs> I'm like about to make some declaration. Pokemon Stadium was the first game I bought with my own money. So usually I just wait for birthdays and Christmases, but I had saved up some money. My parents said, hey, do you want that new Pokemon Stadium? Yeah. Okay, well, if you want it now versus Christmas and your birthday, you can use your own money. <laughs> so I was like, okay. And I remember them sitting down. It was like a big deal. Like they were just kind of teaching me life lessons. Like, yeah, enjoy it. And you worked hard for it. And I was like, oh, cool. So love that I kept that. Um, Super Mario 64, that just went for a million dollars. $1.5 million sealed. Someone graded it. Um and it just went for $1.5 I don't know what the heck is going on with that. Mine is not sealed, or I would not be doing this video on YouTube. I'd be at the, I'd be in the Bahamas sipping on some margaritas. But here I am making this video. But that is my original copy that I got as a kid. And I actually had the PS1 first, um, and then I got an N64, and I really freaking love the very few games on N64, but a lot of it's trash on the N64. I think that it has a terrible overall library and really it's only like 260 games so when i was doing collecting i actually almost went back um and like got some of these you know maybe i can actually do a complete n64 collection but it's it's like look how much space this is taking with stuff i care about you know like do i really want to get a complete collection of some of game like you got to get all the mlb games and madden it's not worth it i don't think it's worth it so the way my collecting philosophy and what i have outside of there might be a goofy game like triforce heroes i really want all the zelda games that's okay like i'm not getting 30 games of 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 trash and shovelware but I found that the games that, that mean a lot to me, that I genuinely enjoy, that I want to have on a shelf to look at, that's what's on my shelf, and that's how I collect. And everyone's different. I love going on YouTube and watching videos of people that have 30 
the complete collections. I just love seeing that and embellishing in that and kind of living through it. But for me, I just really love the stuff you'll see on my shelf. I care about. I want to play. Um, I want to, it to take up my space. Next up is a collection that all is from 2013 except for two games. And let me move Venusaur over here. Sorry, PGA or PSA. Uh, um, or is it PGA? It's PSA. What the heck is going on with my vision? <laughs> um, I had to rebuy this entire collection except for two games. Because Sega Genesis, compared to Nintendo games, I was more of a Nintendo guy. I, I loved Sonic and was obsessed with Sonic, but it got to a point where I think I needed to get some PlayStation games, I wanted some extra money, and at a yard sale, I sold all my Sega games, my Genesis, and everything. So I had to go back years later, get my Genesis again, and... Um, rebuy all the games I remember playing as a kid. So actually I take back three games. This was in my parents' garage, but I had that as an original, but everything else I had to rebuy um, outside of these uh, and then Sonic and Knuckles. These were all found in my parents' garage. For some reason I kept the box ones. Like those were special. <laughs> I don't know why. And then this X-Men, I love that cover, that metallic cover on there. That is just so sick on there. And the sunlight just hits. But everything else I had, to, I had to rebuy. I love this X-Men game. I love the cover for it. I think there was a poster that was actually included. But that got thrown away when I was a kid. But I love that X-Men game. And then the rest of these and the Sonic. And Sonic 3 is my favorite, I think, of, uh, of um, that series. But yeah, pretty cool. Sonic and Knuckles are cool. You can actually plug the other Sonic games into it. It's kind of a neat little feature. And next up is my GameCube collection. These also have skyrocketed in price over the years. But the Donkey Konga series, we'll just go left right here. Gone Good and Evil, underrated. It's, it, it's other systems and stuff. It's fun. Donkey Konga, love these. I still have the original bongos. Those are in the closet. Couldn't display them. Take up way too much room. But uh, those are fun to play. And then they even made this side-scroller um, platforming game that used the bongos to play. Luigi's Mansion, amazing launch title. Great. Love playing Mario Kart back in the day. Double Dash uh, with Double Dash here. And Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes is actually, I like the remake. I liked this. People kind of complained it's too uh, bullet timey. They kind of turned the game into it just came out in 04. Matrix everybody was high on the Matrix and I think uh, kind of took too much from that but I enjoyed it. Uh, that pa this Paper Mario game is actually incredibly uh, expensive now, but it is one of my favorite all-time RPGs. It is so engaging. It's so addicting. The characters are funny. The environments are beautifully detailed. This game, I understand why this game goes for a lot because of that. It's just a great game. And then two, it's just um, Nintendo has not made this available on any platform since. If they remade this or ported it, oh, I'm day one. Put that on the freaking Switch, please. Oh my gosh. Uh, Prince of Persia games, pretty fun. Super Mario Sunshine, I loved. I really enjoyed. I got this after the fact. I actually got the GameCube a little later into its life. A couple years in. But I really liked Super Mario Sunshine back then. But I played it recently um, for the stream. We did a Hangout stream. Not a good game. Uh, poor controls. Has aged kind of bad. Down here, continuing the GameCube collection, Smash Brothers Melee, happy to have that. Uh, Tells of Symphonia was the first, no, I take that back, uh, I think it was right in the same year. This is tied with the first game I ever pre-ordered, and that was Tells of Symphonia. I remember reading about it in game magazines, people were hyped about it online, I really wanted to play it, so Tells of Symphonia, amazing RPG, great game. Here are all the Zelda games that came to GameCube. That is uh, Wind Waker. And th this is the thing, too, when I was collecting. When I decided to collect, you could see, oh my gosh, the freaking the black sheep of the family. You got the, these are the greatest hits, or what are they called? Platinum. No, this is called Player's Choice. Yeah, I think some, something's platinum. These are Player's Choice games. So they reissue the games. They put the yellow ugly label. You put the green ugly label on the PlayStation. You know what I mean? You can see right here. But my philosophy when I started collecting was I'm not rebuying just for the black label. That is so, you know, 
So stupid. Let's just not do that. So anything I had before I got seriously into collecting, and these, like I said, I got in late with Wind Waker and everything else, and I think that game actually came with the... Um, I have a, the black GameCube. No, actually it came with the Master. I think this came with this, and yeah, I got that separately for Christmas or whatever, but this pro, the promotional thing, and I got that. Um, but I have that. I have These are kind of rare, and then the Ocarina of Time, this two... Game bonus, I think those are more rare, kind of more expensive ones. The GameCube, overall, um, I think had some gems on it, but uh, probably one of my least, I, I would say better than N64's, like total library, what it had. But um, I think N64 is under it still, but I would put the GameCube not too high. But, man, Melee, Double Dash, there's some great memories. Metroid, it's, it's still a pretty solid system. And I think... That's why it's going up in price. It's still pretty amazing. Also, the discs are, like, that big. I don't know why they did that, but I think that's another u- unique feature of the console. Next up is the Wii. Not a not a huge collection here either of Wii games, but um, got uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns. I thought they did an amazing job with these, um, kind of rebooting the franchise of Donkey Kong Country, I guess you would say. Metroid Prime Trilogy on this, uh, on the Wii, was very fun to play with the motion controls. Um, I thought that worked perfect for FPS games. I thought that was fun. Metroid Other M gets a lot of slack, but it's actually kind of a fun game. Gameplay-wise, it can get very stupid with the story and stuff, but uh, Metroid Other M, check it out. I think actually think it's a, it's, a, it's a very divisive game in the series for sure. And it's not the best, but I enjoy it. New, New Super Mario Brothers played the crap out of that co-op, but the thing with that game is you cannot run through people. So if you are playing co-op like we were, and there's four players on screen, everyone is knocking everybody into the lava, screaming at each other. Such a funny time. No More Heroes, um, I loved the first one, and it uses the Wii in such cool ways. It uses it in very cool ways, but um, and I really enjoyed that, and I never... I don't think the second one got as much hype, and I skipped out on it. But the other day, I was at a thrift store, and they had this for like three bucks, four bucks. Mm, yeah, please, I'll buy it because I think it's it's more of a rare title. Um, it's a pretty, it's not in terrible condition. Oh my gosh, is there something? Is there a scratch on there? Oh my gosh, I might have been scratched. Call the police. But um, yeah, I picked that up for like four bucks the other day, and I was like, well, maybe I'll check it out now because uh, I got it for so cheap. Super Mario Galaxy and Galaxy 2 I almost put together as, as, as two things. And I love, those are some of the, my favorite games ever made. Um, I, I almost see them as one and the same. I think Galaxy 2 improves Galaxy 1, but I almost see them as one and the same. Uh, they're almost, Super Mario Galaxy 2 is almost DLC pack, but those are incredible. Super Paper Mario, this was the start, I think. This is the in-between game of me never uh, enjoying Paper Mario again. That GameCube one is my favorite, and this one is still fun, but it starts to take out l- like less of the RPG stuff, I think, in this one. It's still really good, but I think it was it was actually every game after that has been a stinker to me, and I have I have avoided <laughs> that series. Smash Brothers Brawl, probably the least favorite in this uh, the Smash Brothers series. It has the weirdest kind of feel to it. Um, and then comes fresh off melee, which is one of the I get that that game is so almost broken in some ways that it has it adds the level of competition. And I and I have a friend that's really into it. Shout out Devin that's into to Smash Brothers more than I am. But growing up, I just loved playing Melee with my my buddies, and we'd stay up super late on you know sleepovers and stuff, and just and just hang out, eat pizza, and play that. So I don't really have a skin in the game competitively on this, but I can see why people didn't like that because I look back at, and you'll see in a second, uh, Mario Kart Mario Kart DS also was broken in that you could snake. You could keep going back and forth. And that kind of is what reminds me of like Melee was, was there's a level of brokenness that creates such a fun competitiveness that if you can, there's like a meta game on top of that. Whereas Brawl uh, kind of took all that out, made it more casual, I actually hated this period of gaming. That's kind of an insight on my thoughts in general on, on video games. But 08, like 06 to like oh to 2011 or something, 
gaming, I, I almost fell out of it because E3, I remember 08, Nintendo, everything just was so casual and Kinect was taken off and every game was made for Kinect. I, I've never felt so burnt in my life with video games in that period. So that, I kind of think of Brawl and I kind of throw it in there. But I had fun with it and people, we did play a little bit of it, but not good memories. Twilight Princess, I think I'm going to say something controversial. I think this is better than Ocarina of Time. I think Ocarina of Time set a foundation, but I love... I think this game just looks better, and I love the atmosphere and stuff it goes for in Twilight Princess. So, big fan of Twilight Princess. Skyward Sword, one of my least favorite games of all time, and definitely least favorite Zelda game. I think I'd put it above Zelda 2. I don't want to go back and play Zelda 2. So, there's that. And Zelda Chronicles, I got a little bit later after release. Um, when it released here in North America, I remember the hype of people trying to bring it over. Oh my gosh, there's so many petitions that I was like, what is this game? Is this any good? And once the reviews came in, I saw how good it was. I picked it up and man, the music, the, the story, the lore of how you're on these two giant, basically gods <laughs> that are fighting. Dude, Xenoblade rules. Xenoblade is one of the best RPGs ever made. Hands down, check it out. And then right here is Wii Sports and the, the Lynx Crossbow Training. It's very hard to get these out, but... Uh, those are the two little uh, things right here. At least crossbow training. I still have the little, I have the box for that, and I have the the shooter thing it came with, which is the little, I don't know what it is, that you put the Wii remote in it and uh, be able to shoot the gun like a crossbow. Um, fun little game. Fun little mini game. Nothing too crazy there. Hiding up here before we get to the PS3. Well, this is a PS3 game, so might as well get to it. This right here, you know, I said I'm avoiding collector's editions. There was one before that happened, before I stopped buying most collector's editions, and I got this collector's edition that is so oddly shaped. I wish they wouldn't have done this, but this was a period when Square Enix was, and you'll see this with the other one. I'll get it right here, too, out for you. We'll just talk about both of them. They wanted to do something cool, and they wanted to include, like, art books and stuff like that, but they didn't want to... Um, pay for just a separate thing in the box so they cut down the cost and in here is actually the book is like all in one encompassing on here i don't know why they did it this way but it's a cool book this is final Fantasy 10 is one of my favorite games ever made um i know it's not the most amazing game sorry i gotta open this up i it's not the most amazing game ever made but there's this and they put all the book like there's like little poster things right here um, table of contents. So see, the art book is stuck to this, like the the case itself, which is. I wish this would have been separate. And then here's the two discs. So I'm like, I basically have another art book. I've almost thought about moving this over to my art books because <laughs> it just doesn't uh, um, fit with anything. And then next, you're gonna look at just this uh, my chair for just a second while I get this back in. But the next. Thing is this Kingdom Hearts, and it does the same thing. I'm not even going to get this out because it makes me so mad. Or can I really easy? Oh, this ain't too bad. Um, there's some concept art of Sora back before the game was made. It's not what he ended up looking like, but I like the ears right there. But same thing, they put the book inside of that. I remember being so mad at that. I just, they just really skimped big time on that. And I remember paying up for this collector's edition. It was not cheap. I think it was this one, or no, it might have been 2.5, came with, uh, again, you're going to be looking at the chair for a second. I think it came with um, a Heartless plush, which, again, I also can't display. It takes up too much room. But we're going to put these back and talk more. PS3. So, And that also, because it's taller, that was, that was something I forgot to mention about the Kingdom Hearts one. It's taller. It sticks out above this and actually does not fit even on the shelf, I don't think. And if I think it does, it just it just looks weird. It just doesn't fit with everything else. So freaking lame. So, um, Square Enix, what were you thinking? PS3. Now, I was a ginormous PS1. I'm about to get to them. PS1 and PS2 fan. Ungodly huge PS1, PS2 fan. But when it came to the PS3. N Everything was going wrong with it. All my favorite, like 360 came out a year before, so I got that. And I was having so much fun online playing with my friends 360. Excuse me. That I just went all in on that. And the PS3 came out. It was so ungodly expensive. It didn't have 
any games I cared about the point. I also, at the point, I loved Crash Bandicoot. I loved Jack. I loved Ratchet and Clank and all that stuff. And what came out instead was um, Uncharted. And this dude running around like Indiana Jones did not appeal to me at the time at all. I've gone on to really love Uncharted, the series. But at the time, I couldn't freaking care less. Oh, my gosh. So I got this really late. And back on vacation stories like with my computer earlier, I actually... My family had a big, you know, family vacation plan and went through and they said, hey, that's almost was inspiration for getting this after COVID hit and couldn't do anything. Our family plans fell through and they were like, hey, Zach, what do you want to do? My parents were like, hey, what do you want to get? And I said, what about PlayStation? They were like, we'll do it. Like, we'll use the money we were already going to use for that and get you a PlayStation. And I remember like going to the game store and I, I was pretty... I was looking forward to it, like, oh, man, I get a PlayStation 3, and it's not my birthday or Christmas. Cool. I get to actually, you know, get something during the middle of the year, during summer, but I didn't have much games. I remember I got Resistance with it, and that was my one game, and then I got the PlayStation 3. But um, this was, I got it maybe a year after release, 2007, I'm thinking. Um, but I didn't really dig Resistance. It wasn't big. But the one game I knew I had to have a PlayStation 4, or PlayStation 3, 4... <laughs> Not, you know, 3, 4, but um, was Metal Gear Solid 4, which I have the limited edition. And I actually still have the boxes out in the garage, but that is the limited edition version of Metal Gear Solid 4. Um, there came with a little art book thing with it. Oh, and a making. Actually, it might have just came with the making of, of Metal Gear Solid 4, which is really good. Um, and then I got this kind of a couple years ago, and it is still sealed. Uh, and that has all the Metal Gear Solid games in it, minus like four, I think. Yeah, and then uh, I think the NES games. No, the NES games might be in that one. I can't remember. And then Metal Gear Solid 3 HD, I got that at launch and played through all the games. I think I played them in chronological order, uh, and I want to do that again soon. I love that. Metal Gear Solid is actually my favorite video game series of all time, if you can tell from the 8 million figures earlier. Uh, we'll go down the line. Uh, Demon Souls I got into late. Um, a buddy uh, from work sold me that. I was so frustrated with it, I could not beat it. I actually put it back in the disc, or the box. I was going to sell it. And the way my mind works, I cannot give up. I cannot freaking quit. It, it is the worst feeling in the gut of my stomach. So I took it back out and actually ended up finishing Demon Souls, screaming the entire time. Grand Turismo 5 was fun. I played that with family, actually came over, and we had the, the graphics look so good at the time, and we had the wheel. We played with the steering wheel which is pretty cool. Um, Final Fantasy XIII, fun battle system. I get all the complaints about it. Uh, I actually ended up enjoying Final Fantasy XIII for all its freaking flaws that it is rightfully called out for. Um, but yeah, the PS3 didn't have a giant collection. It's kind of like an N64 to me situation. It didn't have a ton of stuff I was into, but Metal Gear Solid 4 is definitely a highlight. Um, this actually with the PSN they announced was going down, this might actually went back down in price, but this Ratchet & Clank collection is brand new sealed, and so is this Jack & Daxter collection um, is sealed. And I don't think Ratchet... Yeah, Ratchet wasn't brought over to PS4, like, download. It was just Jack & Daxter. Could be mixing that up. It might be the other... I think Jack & Daxter was not, so I think that was more rare, or more sought after was this PS3 game. The Ratchet & Clank PS3 games, they, those were really good. I actually like all the Ratchet & Clank games except for I skipped out on All for One that actually came, surprise, surprise, to PS3. Um, and then Nino Kuni was really fun. They've since uh, ported that to Switch, the time of this recording, um, and PS4, the re, uh, remaster of that. And then Rock Band, I will say, played a ton of Rock Band. My my, my uh, parents one year, wasn't I wasn't even looking at Rock Band. Um, I, I used my friends, like I'd go over to my friend's house and they bought me the Rock Band drums, the guitar and everything, the big giant set. Um, for Rock Band 2 um, for PS3 and I've played that more hours than anything else I think with friends so that was really fun and then uh, I think that's it for PS3 everything else you've played it you've seen it the PSP the PSP I got on launch in 05 when it came out and that screen and how beautiful it looked and having 3D games along with the DS it was cool to see but the DS didn't have the horsepower, the the freaking graphics capabilities of the PSP. Um, I got at launch the Metal Gear uh, Acid, which is down here. 
So I didn't have enough room the way I had, I had to set this up perfectly. I had to move Metal Gear Acid down. And that is a card game Metal Gear. And I kind of pair that with Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, which I loved at the time. Because we got, oh, you're getting Kingdom Hearts, you're getting a Metal Gear on a portable. Oh my gosh. But, not very good games. Um, they're just, I, I would rather just had a full, like, legit action RPG, or in this case, a sneaking Metal Gear game. But, we do get that years later. And Peace Walker, where's Peace Walker? Yeah, Peace Walker's right there. Uh, I also got Portable Ops, which stands as a, a, a contested game in the timeline. I don't know if there's been an answer since then, but uh, they never, I don't know if they ever, I know it's the one Kojima did not work on, but that one's kind of an interesting one, but I don't remember a lot about it, <laughs> so didn't have the touch of Kojima. But that, and then I also have down here, these are interesting to show people. This came with the launch PSPs, and this is the sampler disc. And I actually found the band Coheed and Cambria, which I actually ended up becoming a really big fan of uh, from this disc. It had music videos of them. It had a Three Days Grace like music video on there, uh, classic 05, and then Spider-Man 2. This was a huge deal at the time, these UMDs. Um, this also came with the PSP, and it is um, the whole movie on UMD. I never sat there and watched a movie on a UMD. Never in my life. And I never will, probably. Uh, that's how cool UMDs were. So next is my PlayStation collection. This one is hard for me because the PlayStation 1, to me, the library that it has, might be my favorite game console of all time. I think it's my favorite console. But with the PS4's incredible library, they ported a ton of... They had a ton of remasters, remakes of Crash Bandicoot 1... 2 and 3, the Spyro series. They even freaking uh, remade Medieval. Man, I, I, it's almost between the PS4 as my favorite library of games and the PS1. But the PS1, as far as nostalgia and innovation and what was going on, I might actually have to give it to the PlayStation. Seeing 3D, I don't think you guys can... Uh, I think VR has been the closest innovation in video games since. First game I ever saw... In 3D on the PlayStation was I went over to my cousin's house who had a PlayStation when that came out, and he had Crash Bandicoot 2, um, which is one of my favorite games of all time. <laughs> I think it's just a, it's just a great platformer, and he had it on um, a demo disc. And seeing that, I'll, it's burnt into my brain because it was so innovative. I couldn't imagine graphics looking like that because I was so used to the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo. Um, I just had those. I didn't have this at the time. So seeing those 3D graphics was mind-blowing. So here's my games uh, for the PlayStation. They actually, I didn't intend for this to happen. It just turned out this way. But <laughs> it fit perfectly with the Billy book uh, Bookshelf stuff. Even with, these are demo discs uh, that came with certain magazines you could get at the time. And they actually fit perfectly um, along this. So I didn't even freaking plan it. Maybe it's some Illuminati stuff, but some of this I actually got years later uh, when I was started collecting it. I wanted Chrono Cross. I did want some of these Square Enix classic, art, art, classic RPGs. And there may be some I might pick up, um, like Vagrant Story and stuff, when the prices are not unbelievable. Um, but there's Crash. They remade those. Those are near and dear to my heart. Drivers, uh, goofy but a fun series. I just noticed they are mix match. Sorry. I need to go back to school and alphabetize, go back to that class. All these Final Fantasies are greatest hits because, like I said, when we were talking about the guides late, uh, earlier, I got into these in the 2000s, so they were actually reprinting these, and you could actually still play, of course, these games in the 2000s, even though they came out earlier. And I think, or actually, some of these, even um, the anthology and all these, are just the Final Fantasy um, 4 and 5 and um, are on there. Uh, what was the other one? Yeah, Origins was 1 and 2, and then, yeah, 4 5 was Anthology. Um, or Fantasy, Final Fantasy Chronicles. Then what was Origins? Maybe I didn't have that. I don't know. There was one that was just 1 and 2. Oh, this has, yeah, this is Final Fantasy Chronicles and actually has Chrono Trigger. That's right, it has Chrono Trigger on it, but I heard that's not a good version, so I never played that version. Uh, but yeah, all of my greatest hits, uh, I should have a greatest hits collection. You'll, the first on YouTube. Um, let's move Blastoise back. Thank you, Blastoise. 
Um, Gran Turismo, I played this game as a kid. I have a great story with that. That might be a whole other kind of video about Gran Turismo. But I loved playing that with my dad. I have an amazing story um, with that. Maybe it's not amazing. Maybe it's just cool. I don't know. Jersey Devil is the one I played recently with uh, my friend Kenny. That game kind of sucks, but it's fun to play with friends. I think it just is a terribly controlled game, but fun. Jet Moto, just, I mean, I wish they'd bring Jet Moto back. Metal Gear Solid, it's my original copy. Uh, played that back when it came out with my dad. Scared the crap out of me, uh, that whole game, um, but very fun and left a lasting impression on me and became my favorite video game series of all time. Um, Need for Speed High Stakes, I want to I want to point this game out. I always try to give props to this game when I can. This game, Need for Speed High Stakes, has cop chases in it, but to actually stop someone, to actually, um, pit, you could play multiplayer, like split screen multiplayer, you could both be running from cops, one of you could be trying to be the cop and whatever, you actually had to pin them against the wall and they had to stop, they had to be pinned for so many seconds and you got them. Ever since then, every freaking video game that's come out is more, you hit them and their health bar goes down, you hit them and their health bar goes down. So boring and this is the only one I've ever seen. If you know a game that where you actually have to pin them, that created so much screaming and chaos with me and my cousin playing and my parents. and oh, I love Need for Speed High Stakes, but um, that's that game. Uh, yeah, Prop of the Rapper was the game I played on demos. Some of these I played on demos and Medieval I played on demos, but never got the full thing until, like I said, started collecting in 2013 till about 2016, I want to say. I went into a very crazy collecting phase and I picked up a lot of stuff I missed from my childhood. Um, love Spyro 2 Spine here with the parentheses on 2. Don't know why. This game, um, along among others you might have seen and um, here, but this game right here, Teleconcerto. Let me pull it out here very carefully. This game right here, I'm going to come around. I'm not even going to take this sucker out. Uh, this game right here came, uh, came translated. from. It's an Atlas game. And... I saw this game through a demo disc in my cousin had, and he was in college. I was like seven years old at the time, and it was an import game, They and it was all in Japanese, and you had to go through the menus in Japanese, and it was a cool section of like this, this, this PS1 demo thing, and you'll just never see this stuff now. You just never get to play like Japanese cool stuff that doesn't come here, but we played it, and you're like this cat, this anime cat in this mech and you can shoot bubbles where you can choose what direction the bubbles come out so i'd make the bubbles come out looking like my butt like i was farting bubbles dude as a seven-year-old the funniest thing i'd ever seen i remember i couldn't breathe from laughing so hard fast forward to and i know i remember the year i got this 09 um saw this at a game store and i was like that's a game oh my gosh how much is it 25 dollars frick uh left came back again it was still there and I was like ah, I think I'm gonna get it I think I'm gonna to, to whatever and I told my friends I was like let's play it it's a goofy game whatever I bought it I just checked the prices for this the other day someone paid $500 and mine's in pretty pretty great condition um, with the disc and everything but that is probably one of the most rare games I ever owned we're about to get some more rare games along with Super Metroid I showed but I'll point those out but at the time of this recording I felt like a broken record saying that Tales Concerto is one of my most rare games I ever I own, but very fun. It's a pretty good platformer. <laughs> Tumba and Tuba 2 also are pretty rare. Uh, again, those are games I played on demo disc that I just wanted a physical uh, copy of. I thought they were so fun. Um, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater got me into skateboarding, which I still skateboard to this day. It's a huge one for me. Xeno Gears, I got a uh, late start in when I got collecting. I was like, I want a copy of that, and I want to play it. And that game is incredible. The game is very good, and um, it's also pretty rare now, so I'm glad I got it before then. All these are jam packs. Again, these are some of the games I found some of these other ones on. Um, I got rid of a ton of demo disc. I gave it to a cousin, and I wonder if they still have that. I would love to get that back from them. I have been meaning to like ask, but it's like, hey, do you have all these demo discs I kind of gave years ago? Well, we sold them at a yard sale is what I'm probably expecting, but would love to see if they still have those because I would love to go through those demo discs someday. And that is the PlayStation section. Next up, I'm almost able just to leave this sitting on my desk here, but not quite, is the Game Boy Advanced section. 
or Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance section. These are through the roof if you're trying to collect them. So one issue I came into was there was a period in time where um, I had a room even smaller than this when I was living with my parents. I had a smaller bedroom area uh, I lived in, and they I, I just was running out of room, and I was like, oh, I got I got to get rid of stuff, and I threw out some of my Game Boy boxes. I was like, oh, I'll just keep the manuals, I'll keep the games, and I'll keep them in a little, like I had a little uh, portfolio, you know, those little a storage case you can get for Game Boy games. And I had that, and I was like, I'll just throw them in there. I did that for a lot of them, and I still need about, I think like five or six or seven games I still need to go back. But I had to like, I threw that Bugs Bunny game I really liked as a kid right here in the corner, the very the very left corner there. Um, I had to get uh, that Donkey Kong Land. No, I think I kept that Donkey Kong Land one maybe. But man, uh, that Wario Land one I had to rebuy. Yu-Gi-Oh! I think I rebought re at some point. And my most recent is the Super Mario Brothers Advanced. But man, guys, if, if you think about getting rid of your games, like I get it if you're like, oh, I just don't have that much money I want to trade in and get something new. But man, like the feeling I've had and talked to other people, I've never heard somebody go, like, I'm glad I sold that game. <laughs> There's some that are crappy that I don't ever think about again. But man, so what happened? Because... So what uh, I said that in a different way. <laughs> what happened when I was doing that was I got actually to Pokemon Blue, Red, and Yellow that are here. And when I got to these, because these games mean so much to me and they're so amazing, they're they're I think they're my they're, they're in my top three. I think Pokemon Blue specifically is my probably my third favorite game of all time. I think second's got to be Donkey Kong Country, and number one is going to be uh, Majora's Mask. But Pokemon Blue, and I had red and yellow at the time. Or actually, that yellow, I didn't have the box until I started collecting. I told you earlier I got that in that Game Boy. But that when I got to that, I remember holding that as a middle schooler, holding it in my hand and going, I think I'm going to want to keep this. I think it'll be, I think I'll appreciate me keeping this. <laughs> and dude, future me was, I don't know if I was reaching back from the future to middle school me going, please, God, do not get rid of this. So th that is my original copy, this blue and red. And the yellow, I got the box. The game is actually my original copy, but I had to get that yellow box. But these are the original, authentic Pokemon blue, red, and yellow. And that blue and red, I think those are my most prized video game collection that I own. I don't... It would take ten thousand plus dollars for me to sell those because I know some of those complete in box are going for five hundred. Like some, you got you, some of you are even looking at this and know the eBay prices at the point, and you're like, "That's five hundred dollars. That's five hundred dollars. That's three hundred. That's three hundred. This whole row is like nuts to the point where it's like unbelievable what the prices have gone through the roof with Pokemon. But I. I'm so happy I have Pokemon Blue and Red from childhood and stuff. I just that's my most prized possession. I think is Pokemon Blue and Red, um, and, and I don't even Blue and Red is, mo is uh, worth as much as Yellow, but I, I, those are those are very special to me. There's silver and gold and crystal here. When I was going through the collecting phase, I went back and even in 2013, those Pokemon games were holding their value. Um, I had to. I think Crystal is my original Crystal. I'm trying to think what I throw out. I think I had to get, I had to get gold again. Um, actually, I kept the box. I had this is my original gold. I didn't get rid of it. I don't think. Yeah, this is my original gold. I had to get the game again. I remember having to find the game loose again because it got stolen from my Game Boy. This is a very very minty copy. These two. I was very particular when I was collecting these of uh, Link's Awakening and Link's Awakening DX. They are very minty copies there. Oracle of Ages and Seasons I missed out on as a kid, but those are fun. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh! was awesome because you could put in the number of the actual... Because I loved playing Yu-Gi-Oh! the card game, of course. You could put in the card's like number and get it in the game. How freaking cool was that? So I put in my like deck that I had and actually got the cards in the game. I was I was really surprised by that. That game was really fun. Um, Final Fantasy 1 and 2 is how I first played those games. And those are remakes of the original. I think, I think it's actually really uh, a good way to play those games. 
Chain of Memories, again, cool to have Kingdom Hearts on there. That Superstar Saga, cool story about that. I actually had that uh, in middle school. I was borrowing it, didn't own it at the time. I got this when I was collecting. I went back and got this game. But um, my my buddy, uh, Stefan, shouts out Stefan. I don't think, I don't think you're ever going to watch this. Let me borrow that. Well, summer vaca- or summer break was coming up, and he said... He came to me, he's like, I'm going to need that back Friday, like before, like that's your last, like I need that back. And I was good, about, I never like stole stuff, or, and I, I borrowed games from people, I always got them back, but I was like, okay, I'm about to beat it, I'm about to beat it. I brought that to school with my Game Boy on the last day of school, and I beat it the period before I had to give it back to him. That bell rang five minutes after I beat that, um, the last boss, and watched, the, like the credits went through. And I handed it back to him, I was like, dude, I just beat this. So this game is excellent. Um... This kind of goes with the Paper Mario stuff now to where these are not good games anymore. The the Mario and Luigi games, same with Paper Mario. It sucks. I wish they were good. Um, I think the Switch version is okay than one people thought, but they they don't capture the magic that these had. But I think they still have like good writing and stuff like that. But what a shame. Um, these Metroid games have blown up in price. I know they're pretty, pretty rare now because of... Uh, Metroid Dread just got announced for the Switch. And there's Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald I had to get from eBay when I was in my collecting phase. And this box is banged up. He shipped it in a freaking envelope, and I actually ended up getting, like, partial refund. I was like, you freaking moron. In the nicest way possible, I said, you moron. You ding-dong, is what I said. Um, and then up here is the Metroid. We're about to talk about DS. This is... um. Uh, the DS demo, so the, the Metro Prime was not ready for launch. It didn't get the game ready and launch, but that is the original demo. I feel like that's going to be worth something in some years. Like Wii Sports, for some reason, went up in price. I think that's going to go up some point uh, in the future. And then here's another PSP game. What is that? Daxter. Okay. That was the Jack and Daxter kind of spinoff game. And... But here's some more Pokemon. Pokemon Leaf Green and Fire Red are amazing remakes. They also have the wireless. Uh, they came with the wireless. Um, frick, what's they called? What are they called? Oh my gosh! It says right here, um, the wireless connector. It's like a trading connector or whatever. But I have those complete. Those are complete in box still. Um, very happy to have that. Um, Super Mario Advance, like I said. I've had the game, my original copy before, or forever. Just got the box the other day. I hate spending $60. I think I paid like $30 for the box, and it just hurts to pay for a freaking cardboard box. You just I kick myself in the head every time I do it, but I'm trying to get back that collection. Sword of Mana was another one. I got a couple, like, three or four years ago. I picked it up. I was like, I, I really want the box but again. I threw that freaking box away, but um, I need to replay that game and see how I feel as an adult. Same with Tales of Fantasia. Are those still going to hold up to me as much as I, I liked them as a child? Who knows? A couple Zelda games there. And that Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 is excellent. That is an amazing, amazing um, GBA game. Um, and it feels great to play. It's, it's an awesome uh, translation, I guess, or port. I don't know. It's not really a port. It's its own kind of created levels and stuff, uh, reimagining of some of those levels. But I love those. Uh, I love the GBA version. Next up is DS. Um, I love the DS. Um, I had some really. I don't have a huge library, but I the stuff I have, I played a ton. Um, that Bowser's Inside Story, I played late. I actually played after um, uh, years after it had come out. I played the Partners in Time. That was my uh, after I played Superstar Saga. I played that, and I love, love, loved. Um, Bowser's Inside Partners in Time I loved a lot but then Bowser's Inside Story I thought was incredible I think that's the best actually um, I have to give it to that um, Nintendo Dogs was a fun little cute thing I was just in the cute games I wasn't in like horror and goth stuff when I was younger I just really liked the cute goofy platformer cartoony kind of stuff and I, I, I liked Nintendo Dogs a lot um, what else there the Pokemon games are fun the Pokemon Soul Silver and Heart Gold I have complete. Uh, I think together each of those are like two seventy five a piece. They might have even gone up higher. That was the last time I checked the price a while back, but those were expensive before the pandemic. So uh, there's that black and white, and then Goofy Story. When I was collecting, I there was some stuff I 
kind of over collected on. Like I said, you know, I got to the, the point in my collecting. I was like, I just want stuff. If it's taking up all this room, let's make it mean something. Like, do you really want this on your shelf? And one of those games is Pokemon White and Black 2, both of those. Pick those up. Well, I sold them, I'm going to say, not even a year, two years ago. I had Pokemon White version sealed. Pokemon White 2, sorry. White 2 sealed and I sold I couldn't get rid of it on eBay. I think I sold it for 20 bucks sealed. And I really just I am like to torture myself and I looked up what it's going for now sealed and it was like 250 280. So took an L on that one boys. Um the Professor Layton games, I want to replay those soon. Did those come to iPhone? I hope they did. I hope they would come to a modern thing like Switch. Because those are excellent. I've played every single one in the series. I think Diabolical Box or Unwound Future. It might be Diabolical Box. I actually cried. I, I didn't know a handheld game could make me cry. And it was like tearing me up. I was like, what the frick is going on? Incredible story. Incredible atmosphere. Music is unbelievable in all the games. They're just like brain training kind of games mixed with this anime story. Uh it's like more of a point and click. You're point and clicking through towns. But man, it is. Uh, I don't think you should miss it if you own a DS. And then Mario, of course, and Zelda. The, the Vandom Hourglass is fun. The Spirit Tracks is one of my least favorites. It's very forgettable. Uh, I waited way too late. I played that one very late. Uh, and the Super Mario 64 DS is what I got at launch. And that was incredible seeing it in a 64 game handheld at the time. Um, but there is all of that, and then all those little sleeves right there uh, are like music CD soundtrack stuff is right there on the little the sleeves in between the PSP. So there's that. Um, next up is that's what's hard with the PS1 and the PS2. They have they all had incredible libraries. I think the PS2 had even more. I just hold that special place in my heart for the PS1 innovation with 3D and. Nobody really could figure out 3D yet. It was fun. Uh, but the PS2, I, oh, these are just the golden era, to me, of gaming. Um, I think NES, I think people could be connected to SNES and stuff, but I think this was just so experimental, so crazy times. The output from companies was crazy. There were so many games you couldn't keep up with the amount of games that were coming. Even the crappy games were fun to play. <laughs> That's one thing I miss with the PS3 started to shed out and then uh, the PS4 started shedding even more of of kind of like B-level, C-level games. You know what I mean? It's not that profitable to put that much time into something and it just be average. You know what I mean? Like it's only big corporations left. You know, and uh, there's something to be said about wacky games you'd find on the system that maybe not are that good, but you have fun with. They are experimental and they're fun. So we'll start from left to right here. Um, Ark the Lad's pretty fun. That's the only Ark the Lad game I've ever played. I would say that's an average game, actually. I would say that's about a C average game, and I really enjoyed it. Um, Dark Cloud 1 and 2. 2 is one of my one of my favorite games of all time. It's very it's very good. Dragon Quest 8, Addicting, Final Fantasy 10. Oh, they're all right next to each other. Those games are some of my favorites of all time. Um, 10's its own video. <laughs> it just uh, really means a lot to me. Like, creatively to that game um Gretchen's before fun story about that i bought an extra memory card for that because there was too many reports coming out that, that was cl wiping people's memory cards so i have uh, a, a memory card just for grantors before pretty cool thanks grantors before that's the one time i missed everything could be patched because <laughs> once the game out was out it was out um, Jack and Dexter games are fun they have a wacky one goes from two and two is more like GTA Mature did a wacky thing. Um, Killer7 is one people overlook. That one is one of the weirdest genre bending kind of weird games I've ever played. That Lord of the Ring games, my dad, uh, the two had hours my dad would play all the time. I wasn't really into Lord of the Rings, but I liked watching him play and, and beat that. It was fun. Excuse me. And then this Metal Gear Solid 3 is actually the other um, uh, souvenir my friend bought for me. Uh, he paid 500 yen for that, and that is the subsistence version. So 
I missed out on getting that the limited edition I should have. I think that was subsistence of Metal Gear Solid 3. And the Japanese version, only 500 yen. I mean, that's, I mean, is that five bucks if that? Um, but uh, he got me that. And I love how in these Japanese shops, they kind of re shrink wrap it. This has like its own like plastic, I don't know if you can see that plastic kind of layer on it. Uh, it just kind of feels cool. So I just kind of left that on there, never uh, kind of opened it. Um, but I thought it was cool to have the Japanese version. Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence. And I would like to get a complete collection of Metal Gear games. But that would include Metal Gear for the MSX. Which is, I think, 640 something plus bucks the last I saw. And I want it complete. So i got to get a home equity line out of my house and spend on it. Jeez, oh, peas. Ratchet and Clank games. Some of my favorite platformers of all time. I loved all these. And I'm looking forward to playing the one on PS5. But, and I talked about this on our podcast. 70 bucks is kind of pushing it for me now and I will play that later on on sale but I'm really looking forward to playing the new Ratchet and Clank that came out this year um, Sly, the Sly games are I'm kind of mixed on those those were fun but they're not very memorable and then the Tony Hawk games I'm going to get a lot of hate from Gen Z and, and, and newer fans maybe but uh, yeah, Gen Z is going to kick me in the butt but uh, I don't uh, I the Underground series American Wasteland and all that stuff Everything from 3 and before I really like, and then 4 is kind of my least favorite. I think Underground 2 has some fun parts, and, Ma- and Wasteland are good, but I don't like Underground 1. I don't like... They turn more into minigame crap, and uh, I like, I'm like. i more a fan of the classic Tony Hawk stuff. Xenosaga 1 through 3. Um, Xenosaga, I, I discovered right after Final Fantasy 10. I was like, what is an RPG? The people saying that's a genre of RPG. I want to play more RPGs, and uh, I fell in love with RPGs after Final Fantasy 10 and Xenosaga, so... Um, that uh, I got that, and then uh, two was pretty cool. Uh, I, I I preferred one, and then like three, I actually beat just a year or two ago. I bought that when I was collecting, and I actually bit the bullet too because it was like, ah, this is freaking going to be forty five bucks, fifty bucks at the time. Thought that was expensive. It is now, I think, a two hundred fifty dollar game. I think in that range. So, um. Yeah, kind of a kind of a expensive. All these RPGs have just blown up in price. But I beat Xenosaga three recently, and that is my new favorite. Xenosaga one, I nostalgia glasses. I just loved it. But three is mind blowingly good. It's one of the best RPGs ever made. I was seeing people say that, and I was like, yeah, that's hyperbole. It's probably it's probably pretty good. Nope, it's amazing. It's, it's incredible, and it has an incredible twist story to it that will just leave you uh, leave your jaw on the floor like it did me. Next up is the original Xbox. I bought the original Xbox in 04, so literally um, a year before, a year give or take, before the 360 came out. <laughs> I remember uh, getting out of school and was like, hey, I got or I graduated from fourth, or not fourth, seventh grade or eighth grade. No, it was like seventh grade, and I told my dad, and I was like, can I get an Xbox? And I bugged them, and they were like, okay, we'll get you an Xbox. So Got me an Xbox because I was dying to play Halo. Uh, my friends at school, that's all I could talk about in middle school is Halo. I really enjoyed Halo. I think I had a really good time. Um, and then another story, and you don't see it here, and it'll probably, it might be its own video or I might show it during a podcast or something, but I got Halo 2, the collector's edition, and I've had it sealed for years because what happened was I had Halo 2, um, uh, pre-ordered from Toys R Us, the limited edition. And when we got there, they had sold my copy. And I'll never forget this. My dad went and said, go pick out a controller. And I picked out an Xbox controller and brought it back. And my, da- and my dad said to the cashier, all right, to make this right, uh, we're just going to take this controller for free. And they rug it up and gave it to us uh, because they sold my pre-order copy. We put money down for them not to do that. And they sold the pre-order copy. It was so mind-boggling. Well, a couple of years later, some guy that we knew through my dad um, said, oh, your son plays video games. Yeah, well, I work for some marketing thing or whatever, and I have just extra games laying around that I have to like review or do stuff with. And one of those was the Halo 2 Collector's Edition. Well, since then, I'd been play- I'd played Halo 2 and kind of put it out of my mem- you know, memory or I wasn't playing it anymore. Like, it was back in the... It was in the 360 era. I was like, why does he have this? Okay. So I kept it sealed. Well... I just sent that into what a games to get graded because it was a sealed Halo 2 collector's edition and I want to see 
um, what that comes back as. So I've been waiting forever for that, but that is, I actually have the collector's edition to that as well. Down here is more Xbox here. We'll zoom in. Um, Fable was my most disappointing. That and Tell us Symphony I was saying earlier was my first pre-ordered games. Um, that, that Fable was one of the most disappointing games. Still fun, but ungodly disappointing uh, what what the developer said it was going to be. Just look look up some YouTube videos if you want to see that crap. And we are on to the 360 era. I loved this era of gaming. I got really into the Xbox a ton. It came out before the PS3. I didn't like the PS3's like game selection. And man, the online was so fun. So the Assassin's Creed games were really fun. I think 3 is okay. I love the setting, but I think 1 and 2 are... And then 2 is my favorite of the series. And then everything else I have skipped. <laughs> I've not been into it. Big Bumpin' uh, what is one of the Burger King games. Um, look up uh, the Burger Kings. Those actually work on the Xbox and the Xbox 360. That is why on the cover there on the spine you see no 360 next to it. Because it's actually... <laughs> Weird enough, an Xbox and a 360 game. Very weird. Um, Halo 3 didn't get the cat freaking helmet version. There's a limited edition people called the helmet that you get in for cats because it was not a full scale. But one of my favorite games of all time is Halo 3. Amazing, incredible game. Um, everything else. Perfect Dark was what I got towards launch. Or No, I think that was a launch title. I got the limited edition of that. I love Perfect Dark Zero. Um, I think, yeah, is it Zero? Yep, and I played that online a lot. And that is not a crazy good game, but man, I met a lot of people through live on that, and I loved it. Skate is one of my... F that overtook Tony Hawk for me. I love Skate. Uh, the Skate games are incredible. Um, Oblivion and Skyrim. Oh my gosh, Oblivion. I remember waiting on at the same time Kingdom Hearts 2 was coming out. Dude, those games were... they. Those just are some of my favorite games. Um, Oblivion just blew me away. Just the openness. I remember showing my dad, like, oh, I can walk over to this mountain and showing him, being excited to show him. And uh, and then Skyrim, same thing. Just they really, just hype train-wise, I was so ungodly excited for those games. But there's the 360. Love that console. The one thing I did, for talking about selling, and I was never selling stuff at this point. I was keeping all my video games, and I sold my launch edition uh, of the 360. The reason being is they kept red ringing. So hardware-wise, unbelievably one of the worst consoles of all time. Library-wise and fun-wise, I love the 360. It is so fun. But gosh almighty, did they crap the bed with that red ring and stuff, and it was such a waste. Ugh. So I actually sold that, and I, I'm a little bit bummed I did that, but... um. I'll look back to buying that someday uh, uh, for my collection, but I sold it because I was so unhappy with the, the, the breaking. And I, I even actually had two. I had a, a Pro and a Core console, I think. And I, I would take the, the, the hard drive off one and put it on the other because the Core didn't have come with the hard drive, I think. I think that's what it was. Yeah, it didn't come with the hard drive, and I'd switch them out because I'd have to send one in for a repair and play the other one, and the one would break, and I'd send that one in. That's how I played my 360. That was so stupid, and uh, they ended up uh, doing it for free, repairing all of the um, 360s, which was good. Pretty quickly, they <laughs> saw a lawsuit coming, I think, and I was just sending those in for free to get repaired, but it took, like, you know, took some time to get it back. The Wii U. What a system. Uh, I got this at launch. Everything from the... Uh, the 360 and the Wii I got at launch, but everything since then, I have got the consoles at launch. Um, oh, except Xbox. We'll go into that maybe a little bit. Uh, well, I just didn't get those. Yeah, I'll go into that in a second. Uh, the Wii U. The Wii U. I got this at launch, and this system crapped the bed, I think, in every possible way. Right off the bat, that name. Um, terrible name. People thought it was an attachment to the Wii. Terrible name, terrible marketing, terrible marketing. That is what happens when Nintendo, Nintendo's a little bit too hard, which they think they can get away with a lot, but they did not with the Wii U. They uh, paid for it in heaps. Um, but there is still some really good games on this, and a lot has come to Switch. We're still waiting for, at the time of this recording, Xenoblade Chronicles X, I think we got to wait on. I don't know if they brought Yoshi's Woolly World over or not. I think there's a, the, the newer ones on Switch. Um, and then, like, Devil's Third's never going to get, uh, 
And that's a, that's turned up in years on price too. But here's a prediction for the Wii U. Some of this did come to Switch. A lot of it got ported. Splatoon didn't um, as well. And we're still waiting on Twilight Princess and uh, Wind Waker but uh, to get ported. But it's also a console that I think you're going to see explode in prices. I think this is kind of a Dreamcast type situation, this console. And I think prices are going to go through the roof on some of these games. Uh, so if you want them, and you can still get them pretty cheap right now. But I think these are going to, mark my words, come back to this video and say, you were right, Weebo, uh, when you see this. When you see in a couple years, I think it's going to be hard to get these games and they're going to become collector's stuff. Because a lot of people passed on the Wii U. I think a ton of people passed on it. Um, again, a lot of these did get to port to Switch, so some of that's not going to be maybe an issue. But I think there's going to be a nostalgia for this system. Uh, a goofy nostalgia. Other problem with this console was they um, had... Uh, the, the, the battery sucked. And I remember taking off the back cover because they, they put out a bigger battery. And I was like, oh, this will be cool. And I pulled it back. And it the battery that was in its stock had so much more room in it. And I was like, what a lame thing. You made me like buy this thing to make the battery last longer. So was not uh, happy about that. Uh, over here is my, starts my, so that's the Wii U, uh, whatever. <laughs> the, um, my DVD collection. Uh, I don't have many DVDs and movies and stuff, this, so this will be a quick little section, but all of these are the Mega64 DVDs. Look them up if you don't know them. I love Mega64. They're a comedy group. They made the Resident Evil 4 skits, all these skits, the stuff that you see on YouTube. They kind of pioneered that. Biggest uh, influence to me creatively uh, are those guys, and I love their podcast and stuff, so shouts out to them. So that's my DVD collection for that, and there's some more down in here. Now i got to get down here and explore. But there's some more of that, but also right here is uh, Fable came with a behind-the-scenes if you pre-ordered, and that's what that is, that's what the Metal Gear Solid Saga thing, I think actually came with four, if you pre-ordered, or it was, it might have been even in the uh, collector's system, I can't remember, Tomb Raider, Angel of Darkness had that, Xenosaga had that, pretty cool, and then I got this more recently as the Batman Blu-ray, I don't actually own a lot of Blu-rays, I like to just stream a lot of my movies now that I get, and but the one stuff, I, the stuff I really care about I want to own physically, and that would be the Batman animated series. I mean, you saw the figures uh, recently, and then right here is Evangelion one through three, the the reboot, the rebuild series. Um, and looking forward to, I think they're making an ultra. I think it's going to be a, a 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray for the last movie, 3.0, 1.0 coming out. I cannot wait for them to put that on. Actually, just to see it next month, at all. <laughs> um, more Mega 64 Blu-rays, great stuff. And then that one is for, that one's for Metal Gear Solid 4, actually. So I don't, even, I don't know where that Metal Gear Saga Volume 2 came from. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I can't remember. Was that 3? I got that for a pre-order bonus? I don't remember. But yeah, this Blu-ray came with Metal Gear Solid 4. And then there was a Metal Gear Solid 5 behind the scenes, and that's what that is um, in the Collector's Edition. And that one actually shows the other mission. Shows what, what kind of got cut, some of the, what got cut in the... Uh, Metal Gear Solid 5, famously. Twin Peaks, whole series in there, and I think Fire Walk With Me as well is in that too. So just a couple movies, stuff I really care about. And up up atop, if you can see up there, is more. Um, these are Mega 64, like kind of a, a con. Let me see. I can't even get to it. Uh, give me, give me it. These are like con stuff, and they all signed it. I had people that went to the cons get some for me, and then I actually went and got... Got one, I think, one year my, my on my own at PAX East. So happy to have those. And um, then we get to the end of the Billy bookcase here. And that is all my PS4 games plus some that are sp uh, spilling out. Spilling out of the Billy bookcase. That's my favorite song title from Panic at the Disco. But... Um, Love, love, love the PS4. The library output, the first-party titles, is unmatched. And in the era when the Xbox One came out, it had nothing. It had just duds. Stuff I was into, nothing 
like exclusive. I'm just talking exclusive because third party games came and they looked really, they looked actually better. Some of those on the Xbox One. But the output is ungodly. Spider Man, um, freaking Persona 5, that still is a PlayStation 4 exclusive. God of War, um, Detroit. Uh, the PSVR, oh my gosh, Horizon, it's it, it, Last Guardian, like the last, last was part two, um, dude, Uncharted 4, it's an incredible library, I don't even know where to begin, these VR games are Bloodborne, like, <laughs> Final Fantasy 7 Remake, oh, just so many good titles, but, um, I'm just gushing now, but, uh, the VR is is the closest to recapturing that feeling when I saw the PS1 for the first time with the 3D. So I love the PSVR games, and I wanted to get them physical. I think this Deracine game was a... I think that was a GameStop exclusive. I'll show you the cover here to it. But it is a... Uh, it was a GameStop exclusive, and that is a From Software game. And I think that is... I am going to put that with the Wii U prediction, and I think that will be very expensive one day. That's going to be hard to come by. Um, that's going to be very, very hard to come by, I bet, to uh, be able to play that. But... Love that, and I love almost all the PSVR experiences. Those, those have all been amazing. Um, yeah, Death Stranding's on there. Like, ugh. Incredible library. I don't even know what to say, except just I'm just flabbergasted at how good this is of a library. Uncharted Collection. I think that is actually a sealed game. I have not played those. Anything with a collection, it's like, oh, I'm not really ready to get back into those, so you just hold on to them. And some, some like the Ratchet and & Clank and Jack, da- Jack and Dexter. More than you want. Uh, I don't even know what this game is. Oh, this is Uncharted Lost Legacy. It just wouldn't fit right here. And then I don't even know what this game is. This is Dreams. Uh, some of the more recent pickups uh, was Dreams and stuff. So I think that was on sale and got that. And coming back over here is more recent PS4 games. I got 13 Sentinels on sale. I think it was only 25 bucks at GameStop. I've heard a lot of people talking about that, so I wanted to get that physical. Um, and then Gravity Rush Remastered. Uh, shouts out Wario64 on Twitter. That is an ungodly rare game. Uh, I think they came down in price because GameStop keeps uh, keeps putting them out. Uh, I think they're only like $85 worth, but they, they can keep going up into hundreds and a couple hundred bucks I've seen Gravity Rush Remastered go for because it was an Amazon... Uh, sorry for the focus here. I think it was a, uh, it was it was a Amazon exclusive and they only printed so many. They didn't print a ton. That's the only way to get that, but Shouts out GameStop actually found some in, uh, in like new condition. They didn't say it was going to come to the case or anything. You just got to roll the dice, and they were in really great condition. And lastly, on my... Oh, actually, I have a couple games right here. I have Ghost of Tsushima. Um, another amazing exclusive, which I think is coming to PC soon, but it's been, you know, a place is exclusive for a long time. Very happy to have that. That's I'm still playing that to this day. This is just an incredible game, multiplayer. And then I've got uh, PS5. Um, I had this for Christmas. I didn't even ask for it. And my friends kept bugging me like, "Hey, let's 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 play some multiplayer." I was like, "I don't want to pay 60, 70 bucks, whatever it was at the time, for a Call of Duty." And they bought it for me for Christmas. And oh, I was so excited. <laughs> I was like, "Okay, that's that's the way I want to play that." So pretty fun. And here is my Switch collection, which I just recently expanded on. I only had like four Switch games until this year. (laughs) I had, uh, of course, Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey. And then that Smash Brothers came out and that was it. Oh, maybe that Yoshi's uh, Crafty World. But everything else, not much. Oh, Link's Awakening I had. But I bought like Super uh, Mario um, 3D World came out this year or was it last year? Uh, I think it was this year. Um, Ring Fit Adventure, Mario Kart 8. Dragon Quest XI, like these are great games. Uh, Deadly Premonition 2 sucked. It's very bad, but it's there. Um, and then, uh, uh, what was I going to say? That Link's Awakening was a good remake. I really like that. But I'm slowly trying to get my Switch collection to be bigger. It's also something I want to point out. The worst, any, the worst spine art. White font on a red background. Who gives a frick? And then you go back here to the Game Boy Advance, and these look so fun in spine form. You know what I mean? And the Switch, it's like, man, I just want to display those like front ways somehow someday. You know, like what a lame way. I think the best spine art of all time is the N64. I'm gonna try and I don't want to get off the ground here, but that 
green way, you can actually turn every side of that box as a different way to display it. And then you have this. I just thought that was so lazy. What a lazy way. Who gives a frick? Oh my gosh. Um, but that's it for my games. Uh, I might pull out the Game Boy stuff here in a second to show you guys that. I actually have those loose. That might be fun to see. So I'm going to pull out the... Let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that now. We'll show, you, we'll show you the Game Boy stuff. So here's my Game Boy collection. Let's get that in, in here. I'm going to put it in here. But here's my Game Boy collection of loose carts that I have. Um, not much to say here. Uh... Kirby's Dream Land, I was just trying to get recently. That box on its own is like 80 bucks. It's like 60 to 80 bucks. Kirby's Dream Land 2, even more. I threw it out like a dumb, dumb dummy. And most of these boxers are so expensive. They're like 60 to 80 plus for the, for the box and the manual and stuff, which I kept all the manuals, but out of luck with everything else, these games I got from a flea market. <laughs> my dad got for me or i just found them uh, and probably bugged the crap out on to buy them but I, I these are just weird games and there's not much on the internet about them but these are japanese import games that's just the kind of stuff you found at uh weird weird places like that but I, i'm trying to slowly get boxes for all of these and soon i just want to have this empty and i want to have all of them in boxes i don't know about these japanese games i've tried to find them online it's just really hard um, but I got Banjo Kazooie right here. I guess I guess you can see the art for all the Jungle Book. Yeah, King, this is a game called Kingdom Crusade. Kind of a weird game. <laughs> I don't know where I got it, but uh, but um, Banjo Kazooie, Grunty's Revenge. There's Crash Two. I love that game uh, on GBA. That was really fun. And the first one's even like fun too. But I don't. I never. I never got that one. I think this is Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. Yeah. And then guess what? These boxes are worth. Freaking take out a second mortgage for Gold Sun and Golden Sun Lost Stage. And then we've got Warrior Land 4. So I'm trying to get through them, but that's just my loose collection that I really want to get complete. So we're back down here for the rest of the stuff. And these are my consoles. Let me actually come up a little bit here and show you. This is my, I have a 4K Vizio uh, TV here. This is the PlayStation camera for the VR Got my Elgato. That's how I actually do all my captures for the channel. And these speakers I got when uh, I was in sixth grade, and I still have them, and they still sound great. Uh, the Logitech um, speakers here, and it's got a subwoofer, 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 however you say it, on the side there. Still sounds great, but uh, I think this is a 55-inch TV. Perfect for the distance that need an inch bigger. Oh, my gosh, it's uh, pretty big. There's my Wii U still hooked up. I was actually going to try and put that up the other day, but I just don't have any room to put it. I'd rather have it just to display, and that actually is a cover, so it doesn't get gust on it. Gust. <laughs> gust of wind. A dust cover for the Wii U game pack back there. And this is my newest edition that I got maybe last week, two weeks ago. Shouts out Travis. I purchased his Xbox One, had to get it complete, um, so I could actually put up, and you'll see in a second, my Xbox uh, over there in the bottom corner, if I zoom in, but, um, don't know what I'm going to do with it, there's not much I want to play with it, but at least I can play upscale, like, Xbox games and 360, when I pop, when I pop those in, those are actual backwards compatible, and I think that's the coolest thing the Xbox has going for it, along with Game Pass right now, but that is, I just got that last week, a console from 2013, or whenever the X came out, I don't remember, 2015, frick, I don't know. But that is my newest edition, is the Xbox One. I finally own an Xbox One. Oh my gosh. Uh, I tried to give them money and whatever. PlayStation 5, you might have heard about it. Pretty hard to get. I love the design of this. It's so wacky. It's so alien. Um, I think the PS4 might be my favorite console design of all time. But the PS5 is so Dreamcast weirdo-like that definitely gets a point for me. Down here is the Nintendo Switch, uh, which I hate the dock. I hate everything hardware about this freaking dumb console, but the portability and being able to just hook up the console right back onto the dock, I think is so fun. It's um, one of my favorite portables for that fact. Everything else about it and the build quality sucks. Uh, reminds me of the Xbox 360. Oh my gosh. Um, and then they just announced the other day, 
the Switch OLED. I was actually making room up there. That's why I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to fill up that spot. But I don't think I'm going to get that OLED right now. I'll wait until it goes on sale for collection purposes. But it doesn't output 4K. I don't give a frick. I, Nintendo makes me feel like the Nintendo DS and <laughs> Lite. And now I'm just getting reminded of all that situation. That is my Switcher that I put all these consoles into that um, I bought on Amazon. So when I actually turn the, the console on, it will auto-switch. I think you can turn the auto-switch feature off, but I like to have it on. If I turn the Wii U on, boom, it just immediately goes to the Wii U section, um, and then it pops up on my screen. Um, same thing if I turn on something else, I think it'll jump onto the newest t- turned-on thing. And it came with a little remote, a little IR remote, um, but everything's plugged into that. That uses HDMI, the games you just saw. And then I'm so goofy, I mean... <laughs> The, the one thing I do like about the Switch, like, okay, you're playing portable, and then you're putting, putting back in the dock. But having these feels like a kid went in a bad way that I'm getting too old for, I guess, that, like, you put these cards back in. So I got this. This came with a, a little protective thing I have with the Switch. But I've got to take these out and, and replace these cartridges. And as someone that, like, I mean, look at me. I, I walk the walk. I talk the talk. I love physical media. I love collecting. Having these physical things... Are cool on my shelf but I'm getting to the time where it's like man if I would have had this digitally and been able to jump in and out that'd been a lot funner so and you can fight me in the comments about this let me know what you about the place about your current situation by the end of the ps4 and all these other games and even with some of the switch games but I still collect switch or whatever I think Nintendo will keep you know in value whatever with and, and I've never done it Having physical, you know the game's going to work and it's not going to be taken off the store and you lose access to it, whatever. But the time it takes to like quickly switch and, and I'm just relaxing and whatever else. What I did with the PS5 is I bought Demon Souls digitally. It's my first digitally big game I bought, like console game that wasn't like an indie title. Indie titles, I'll get digital, whatever. But it's the first one I bought digitally. And this Call of Duty game was bought for me for Christmas, like I mentioned. So I'm thinking my PS5 titles will be digital because if you open up the Call of Duty... Let's just look up Call of Duty. Okay, what cool extras do you get? Um, you get... the Sometimes, most of the time, not even this. This says free-to-play, hey, go play Warzone. But it's just a plastic thing with the disc in it. And then when you put the disc in, they want like an $80,000... Not an $80,000. 80,000 gig download update. So, as a collector and looking at this game room, I'm in a weird position where it's like, uh, do I want to pay $60 for just plastic that just sits there and then I have to still download? I don't even own the game. I think the worst offender to that was freaking Spyro over here. Spyro, the remake, the um, Reignited Trilogy. That game didn't even have the, the third game on the disc. You got to get an update. I think there's a 2019, I think that came out 2018 to 2019, is the one that has the third one on the disc, but you kind of burnt the bridge, and it's like, ah, I don't even have the full game, I had to download an update. So big bummer, and stuff like that made me want to just collect, so sorry for the the tangent, but let me know what you guys think about the collecting thing. I I think I'm going all digital, but I got the disc drive because I wanted to get, if I want to play 4K stuff, if I want to get the 4K, or the 4K uh, UHD, Blu-rays, then I want to have that just in case. So I went ahead and got that for 100 bucks extra. Did not matter to me. I thought that was a that is safe bet to just get that. Go ahead and get that. Over here is my PSVR. I love the PSVR. I think that's the closest, I think I was mentioning earlier, to the PS1 that I felt. I think it's so innovative. I don't even know if I finished my thought last time, but I think it's so innovative. It's very fun. Um, it is a ton of wires. Look, there's 13,000 wires back there. And I hope that the, the PSVR 2 is going to come out. They've already like shown the controller for it. I'm very excited for that. And I hope that they cut down the wire. <laughs> Let's figure out cutting down the wires to just one or something. I don't know what they're going to do. But um, and there's a water bottle in the way of the PS3. Let's move that. I don't know if you've heard of water. Check it out. Um, PS3 down there. It's actually not hooked up to anything. I need to actually hook it back up, but I think there was just so many wires I was dealing with. I was like, I'm not playing any PS3 games lately, so that's just down there almost to display, and that's a slim version, but we'll see the unslim version, the fat PS3, in just a second. Next up, we've got Evangelion. 
um, my Evangelion shelf, I should say, I should say here. Um, yeah, I this is what actually got me into figure collecting. You know, as a kid, I had the Power Rangers. I had like the occasional Final Fantasy figure you're going to see in a second uh, back in the day. But I kind of just fell out of, I didn't really get hardcore into figure collecting. But this figure right here, this purple, or the purple, even Ellen Unit 1 kind of looking down with the knife. I thought that was so cool. Um, that little, the angel he has defeated right here. If you've never seen the show, the angels are the bad guys in this uh, in this anime. But he he lights up the little angel or something. I just thought that was so cool with the LED light and stuff. I thought that was a cool figure. But those are all these are all Revoltex, um, the Revoltex series. I think they did an amazing job. Uh, there's Unit 13. Yeah, Unit 13 right there in the middle. Prototype Angel. You can see all of them. I love this one. Had the moon behind, um, behind that one. Funny story with that figure. My wife got that for me, and I think that was the first day we said we loved each other, and we always joked that like, oh, I just had to buy you an anime uh, Evangelion figure, and that's what made you love me. So we always joked that was the figure that brought our love, uh, brought our love out. So, um, but love all those figures. Uh, there is, and I actually have reviews for some of these up on the channel. I think, but definitely that one in the uh, right here, this half unit two and unit three, that was in the preview for the the last film back in like 2013 when the third film came out, uh, somewhere around that time. And that is a very hard to get figure. It was hard for me to get then. I had to only get it from Japan, so very hard to sort out. And that last one is only in the manga. You see it, unit six. I think is what it is. You get it nine. I think one of these units six. I think that might be six or eight or I can't remember. Frick it. Um, but whatever the silver one is, uh, I think in the manga, which I have not read, but I bet it's in there. All right. The second Billy bookcase here with the glass doors. Got some TV stuff at the, the top here. Got all my amiibos and some final console stuff here so we'll just start at the top here with tv show stuff and we've got let me get on this chair so i can die um we've got some dragon ball figures here again those acrylic things come in handy oh sorry the dust i think is freaking messing with me someone's got a dust in here i don't know who's gonna do it darkwing duck um but that is those acrylic things kind of help put Piccolo up at the top there. Um, we've got um, Goku, got Vegeta here. I think those are Figure Arts Zero figures. And I actually I used to have a ton more uh, Dragon Ball figures that I got rid of. I just liked the statues uh, and said, big Darkwing Duck guy had to get there. I have a ton of little like figures from my childhood, but again, can't display every figure. Just got this newer one that came out. This is actually the Lost Blu-ray set. This thing is incredible. I think uh, you just look up online what is in this thing. Uh, tons of little secrets. One of the coolest sets I own. Actually, the coolest. <laughs> I think the coolest set I own. Um, and then there's John Locke with the orange in his mouth, bobblehead. thought that was cool. The Breaking Bad set, the limited edition set, it's all in that barrel. I actually used that recently and pulled that out. Um, you know, my wife rewatched Breaking Bad. And they're just in these little, like... Um, the cylinder and they kind of just roll out it's look up on youtube what those are it's a it's a really cool set um and then these little i think those are neca figures and I accidentally broke his glasses on heisenberg um so he's just uh he's sunglassless now people know who he is because the sunglasses really hid what that was this is my amiibo collection um this is a more recent development because, and let me know what you guys think here. Um, we've got all these figures that are, some of these are more of the older ones. There's some newer ones. But what happened was in 2014, um, I think it was, 20, yeah, 2014, maybe 2015, I wanted all the figures from the Smash Bros. I just always liked the look of them. And what happened was, um, 
Oh, I need to actually open this up. I'm so sorry. I apologize. Oh my gosh, amiibos. I'm sorry I didn't. I'm, I'm viewing you through glass like we're at a zoo. But what happened was, um, I love. I wanted to get them all again, like Pokemon. I got to catch them all, and I did that. But then what happened was, they came out with these. I'm gonna zoom in on the culprits, the freaking um, cloud. And Bayonetta, and then where's the freaking Corrin, you little crap? Corrin, Corrin, whatever, how you say it, uh, up there in the corner. And uh, when they made them, they made a player two, and they were different models. And that freaked me, and I bet I wasn't the only one, freaked me out. Because I had collected all these, and I was like, are you going to make a whole other um, series? Like, are you going to make... Oh my gosh, can I? It keeps freaking up. Okay. Um, I was like, are they going to make player two of all of these? Like, we're going to have another Mario. Like, Mario, he's going to be a different pose, and that's how they're going to sell him. And I got out. I said, I got all these. I got all the Wii U players. So I finished all the Wii U, like, the DLC, got them, and got all that, and got the heck out of Dodge. As we know, Switch Ultimate comes out. They start making more amiibos, and I'm like, I'm glad I'm out of that. Well, what happened was, freaking Banjo Kazooie is what happened. Banjo Kazooie and K. Rule. I saw those. I'm out of the, the the amiibo game, and I'm I'm like freaking. You know the quote from The Godfather. Once, once I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. And he what he was talking about was amiibos. So what happened was, from 2015 till. This year, 2021, I've been out of the Amiibo game. But seeing Banjo-Kazooie, I was like, oh, that one's freaking cool. And then I saw K. Rool. Oh, that's freaking... When's the last time you saw a K. Rool action figure in 2021? You know what I mean? Like, these are awesome. I held out on K. Rool when I saw Banjo. I was like, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. And finally, I broke down and got it. But that isn't all. I had to start collecting the others. So, I'm playing catch-up. I think I am... There, I, I'm waiting. I pre-ordered. Uh, they did a reissue of Dark Samus and uh, of Ridley. And I'm waiting on those to come. I pre-ordered both of those. But after those, I think I have like 16, 17 left that I want to get to complete the collection. So I just got these uh, more acrylic little shelves and stuff. And going to fill them up all the sides. And then I have a, a, I have a really cool idea. And I want to maybe, just, I'll just put it on Twitter. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. But I have a really cool thing I want to put in the middle of these um, instead. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see when I complete the rest of the collection. But just waiting to fill the shelves there with the, the remainder of the figures. Hopefully it fits. I will scream. I think, I think I'm good. <laughs> I think i got 17 spots here open. But... Um, yeah, uh, I love Amiibos. Let me know if you guys are Amiibo heads. I also collect them loose. I get them usually new. I haven't bought any used yet because they've just been similar priced to the new. And I've just lucked out in like finding some good deals on that and finding some pre-orders for reissues and stuff. Or people have them in, in Best Buys and I'm there. But uh, I'm getting to the point where some of them are getting rare. And I'm actually have to pay up. So if we're talking about my rule for collecting was like $100 for games back in the day. <laughs> this time I don't want to pay over like $35 for an Amiibo. But so far I've paid like $20 average for all that you see here. Um, trying to bargain hunt for these Amiibos because they're so small. But um, yeah, got 17 left. Maybe do a follow-up little video about Amiibos. There was a lot of fun stories about hunting these things down. Um, back in 2014, 2015, it was just absolute mayhem trying to get these and, and different. I, I sent my wife to GameStop when I was working to go run down into the stores because you can only pre-order some in the store. It was crazy. So uh, I think I'm looking at you, Ness. I think it was Ness that did that. Yeah, I think it was that uh, Game and Watch too. I can't remember, but yeah, love the Amiibos. I love the way they look. Um. And I actually am just getting back into the actual Smash Brothers Switch right now and stuff. So perfect time and just, I, I really love the way these look. These, these look amazing on a shelf. I just love these minifigures. They just have great tea dealt to them and, and fun. So there's all that. Oh, and also I'm waiting to the very end to get Cloud Player 2. All the Player 2s that we hated and I was screaming about, nobody bought. And they didn't, I don't think they even made a lot of them. And they are $100, some are $150 of those three. So I'm going to 
bite my lip and punch myself in the head and buy those at the very end. And that will complete my collection of Amiibos. Next up is Sega. This is the Sega shelf. I wanted to start to kind of theme these up if I could. Same way with um, that I did over here with uh, little Diddy Kong and that stuff. Um, I did right here. I didn't really have room for this, this next shelf, but uh, for the Sonic stuff, or Sonic, the Sega, I got the Dreamcast here with the controller. Did not get that at launch. That was, uh, I had the N64 and PS1, and my parents weren't going to pay for another console in 1999, so had to get something else that year in Christmas. I think it was, I think it was a, an N64, can't remember. But uh, there's, there's a bigger Sonic there. Figure I just wanted to put, and then the Sega Genesis. Uh, Again, had to rebuy. I had to actually rebuy the Genesis, the Dreamcast that I never owned at launch, but I had to rebuy my Genesis I had from childhood because I sold it. Because I'm a dummy, but at least I didn't sell my Nintendo stuff. The next thing is N64. And right here, I actually have this little camera. I don't even know if I'm going to keep this on the shelf, but this is just a weird thing I got from uh, my uh, one of my family's side of the my dad's side, uh, his Christmas party. At their family Christmas party, I remember as a kid, there was a ginormous box gift and a small, small box. And they, like, we were drawing names, the kids were. And they were like, all right, Zach, you're up. And I was like, do you want the, like, you only have a choice between those two. Do you want the giant big one? Or I was like, one of the last ones to be called or the small one. And I went, you know what? The small one. And I'm glad I did. It was this N64 camera. Just what a weird thing. And that's always been in my collection. Weird thing to have in the collection, but it uh, looks cool. And there's the N64 didn't get this uh, at launch. I got these towards Christmas, maybe a year or two after. I can't even remember what year exactly, um, but it's my original one from childhood. Had to add a quick little addendum to this video because I got this Donkey Kong 64 Jungle Green N64 from my aunt. I have a lot of memories with this. I was so lucky to get this. She gave this to me. Um, so you can see it's it's complete. I think the only thing it was missing was the uh, audio cables, but you can just buy the separate audio video cables. But man, I played this growing up um, at my aunt's. My aunt would come over and help me with Donkey Kong on the Super Nintendo, and then I would come over and help them on the uh, Donkey Kong 64. They were having trouble, so it was cool. That's one of my most special memories with my aunt and uncle. So here it is. I had to replace my original. I had to get it on the shelf, so beautiful thing. Original GameCube, got that I think a year or two years after the launch of the GameCube um, there. But I got the black edition and then attached to it is that Game Boy Player. I think I need to actually take that out so it sticks back further. Looks a little nicer, but um, that and then this GameCube controller is mint. It is, I maybe used it, no I actually never used this controller at all. Um, it came with the console and what happened was when my parents got it for Christmas one of the things on my list was the Wavebird wireless controller so when they bought me the GameCube they bought me that so what I did is I actually stuck this back in the box and this is still wrapped and it's still like I don't know if you can see it focus um that little uh zip tie thing or whatever they come in and that is a brand new mint GameCube controller uh because I used that game controller uh the wire or the Wavebird sorry Till that thing doesn't even work anymore. I used the Wavebird till it freaking broke. The Wii, uh, there's the Wii. Um, as you can see up here, well, focus, please, focus, please, please focus. Will you focus? There's a small nick. There's a very small nick on it. And I'll never forget, I and it was from these speakers right here. They fell off, they fell when I was um, moving stuff. And the way I had my old set of my parents' house, and that fell and nicked it, and I was like, ah, oh, crap. Well, it's just the front. I wonder if I can see a new front faceplate. And I remember calling Nintendo, like, support their repair. I was like, yeah, I just want to, you know, repair that. It got nicked on the front. I just want to get a repair or whatever. And they were like, oh, yeah, it's going to be $250 or something. And at the time, that was like, you might as well have said a million dollars. I said, yeah, I just want to get the nick on the front. I just want to get a new faceplate. So yeah, it's going to be $250 because we have to repair the whole thing. Okay, well, I guess I just don't do that. But So I just have, that always reminds me when I drop the freaking speaker on it. But that is my original Wii. I got uh, the Christmas of it coming out. So it came out like a November, I think, or something of 06. So that Christmas I got. One of my best favorite Christmas uh, memories was getting that. Such a surprise getting that because uh, the stock was so low. 
Next up, again, you can kind of see me if you if you were wanting to mirror cam. Um, this is the PlayStation shelf that I. This was kind of the big start. I was like, I, I'm running out of room. I'm about to get the PS5. I need more room for this, and that's what made me move all that over there and start to space out everything up here. Just spill everything out so I can create it. You know, the old handheld section and. These get their own, like these are bigger shelves. They need to have consoles on them. So I'm very happy with the setup. This is the PlayStation setup. PlayStation 1 in the middle there. The PSP, and the PS Vita, which the PS Vita I got during my collecting days of 2013, 2016. When I went on my rampage, my collecting rampage is some, uh, that's what my Wikipedia uh, says on my Wikipedia. There's a section just titled the collection rampage period. Um, Somebody should make that, by the way. But um, the PS Vita there, um, that is a kind of a butt system to me. Uh, I like the Gravity Rush, and I don't think I've played anything else on it except Gravity uh, uh, Gravity Rush, yeah. But it's a cool system, and I like the touch stuff, and the OLED screen was really cool. But I have that complete in box I got from Arcade Legacy. Again, shouts out. Thank you. Uh, that's my original PS2 and PS1 from Childhood. And actually, I have a really cool story. So that PS3 I actually got recently. I've been looking for years on Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace, because I wanted to get another PlayStation 3 Fat. I got this PS3 Slim because I was still in high, or I was in college, or was I in college? No, I was in high school. And my PS3, the it got yellow ring. It couldn't read disc anymore. I was like, crap. Well, when I sent it in, they said, hey... When you send it in, it'll be 150 and we'll give you a new system with more hard drive space or you give us the old one back. Or you, uh, like, you'll take that or we'll just give you your old PS3 back, but it costed more to take the old one back. And I was like, frick. Uh, well, that's a no-brainer. I just want a bigger hard drive. And I do regret that because I had the old system that played the PS3. One, two, and three. It was backwards compatible uh, model because I got it, you know, when they were still having that. So what happened was I was like, "Crap! I'll have to buy." I still have the box. I kept all the box, like my my Game Boy thing. I'm always keeping boxes. I'm a box hoarder. Marketplace, Thanksgiving of this year. Yeah, no, yeah, of 2020. I think me and my family, we were going to meet outside. That's what it was. We were meeting outside because COVID stuff, and we were all like chilling there. But before then, I was looking on Marketplace, and somebody had one of these. And I said, oh, and I said can you show me the back? Or I, I, I will always usually ask if I see a PS3 on there. This is before COVID pandemic stuff took over, like big on the pricing. But I said, hey, do you have, um, can you show me the back? And the back was a backwards compatible model. And I said, hey, I've been looking for this. You know, could I come tomorrow? And I don't know, I think I even asked that. And he said, well, I don't know. There might, it might, if it's still here tomorrow, sometimes I was like, I can meet now. And I was like, whatever. So I went on Thanksgiving Day 2020 and met this guy in a parking lot and got this. And I think he had some other, oh, he had like some cooler thing attached to it, those little fan things. But it, was, it wasn't in bad condition. It's a pretty good condition play PS3, and it's an original model that I had um, that played backwards compatible. So, so happy to got that back in my collection. The other story with uh, this, I don't, I don't think I've ever told the story, but this sticker on the front, I got out of a magazine, one of the PlayStation magazines, and I put, put it for some reason on my PS1. And I just kept it, because that's how I had it as a kid, and it doesn't look too bad. It's a little weird, a little off, but I'm not going to take the sticker off after all these years. It's just going to look like junk. In my work, I do video work. for I work with different companies and stuff or whatever. And one of the companies I worked with was a printing company that's kind of close to, to me here in Ohio. It's about two hours away, hour two hours away. And while I was there, they had like a portfolio book. And they're like, can you shoot the portfolio book? And I said, yeah. And they pulled it out and I was shooting it and I was flipping the pages. And I crap you not, this sticker, these stickers were on there. This one or whatever definitely was on there, this, this middle one. And I said, 
uh, I said that I had that sticker and they're like, yeah, that was one of our big clients or whatever. Sony contact us and whatever. And they were the original ones. And they said they were going to actually, if they found extras, they were going to actually like, they took my number, like we'll send you some extras or whatever if we find it. But I was like, man, I, I have that. And I put that on my console. So how weird. I thought that was so cool. Like I went to the place and I actually got to shoot the building and what the stuff they were making now. But um, yeah, they, they actually make that sticker for Sony. They were the ones that won the bid, I guess. But um, that's my PlayStation 1, PlayStation little stuff there, the PS4. I don't have the, the slim PS4. I do have the PS4 Pro, and that is set up in our living room for when we put on rock band and friends come over. Um, put the, the Pro model in there, but that's this is the regular launch PS4. And lastly is a also, along with the Amiibos, a... Ha, uh, there's one extra couple pieces that need to be added to it. And I'll explain that in a second. So there's my original Xbox I got the year before the 360 came out. What great timing. <laughs> I'm glad I got it, though, when I did. Uh, there's some Halo figures. Um, that one is the old Polygon. They made it look like, again, I'm a sucker for the old graphic stuff. It's the old Polygon model of Halo 1's Master Chief. And then that's Halo 2, I think... And I can't know. I don't know if that's a McFarlane. I can't. I, I think it's a McFarlane Halo Master Chief. I can't remember. But I was going through stuff in my parents' garage, uh, garage and found that from my childhood and stuff, and put that. Decided to keep that and put that out. This is my 360. I just recently put out because I bought that Xbox One. That is the Elite. Is that the Elite Gloss? I don't know what freaking model. I, I waited till they got this model. And what I did is I kept one of those Xboxes. So I sold the one. And then I saw that this was coming out, and GameStop had a deal, and I did the numbers, and I traded that in. At the time, I mean, I didn't have a job or whatever like uh, that was going to pay to where I could just keep buying the stuff. Um, and I traded in the next box to GameStop, and I think I paid fifty bucks. They were doing extra with the trade in, and I got that. For, they got this for fifty bucks plus the old crappy freaking Xbox. So. Um, that's the one I use. The funny thing with this console, though, is that button down there is touch. And I even had this the other day, and my dog rubbed up against it. Just I, I tell people the story all the time. I was at a friend's house, and my friend was really close to beating like some level or something, and his dog rubbed up against that or whatever. It was sniffing and turned it off. It's an extremely hypersensitive touch button right there to turn it off and on. And my dog did this the other day. He, they, she actually turned on the system until I got my Xbox One, Xbox One over here. The thing that is missing is that Halo Two. I'm gonna put right here that Halo Two. What a games rated. I hope it's not like a four because that'd be embarrassing. But I have a sealed copy of Halo Two that I'm gonna put in the middle right here of my. I think that'll complete the Xbox section for now. Um, but that is this row of consoles and the amiibo shelf here so we're going to go to the final wall the final wall here is the final wall of the game room so we've come all the way around the world and we end on the gallery wall here and there's stuff still to come, but the Final Fantasy VII Play Art or Final Fantasy VII Remake Play Arts shelf. We got a, excuse me, a Square Enix slash anime kind of shelf. Oh my gosh! Excuse me, I'm just burping from just I'm just amazed um, here. We'll just talk about the gallery wall and work ourselves to the cream of the crop up there with more figures. Uh, this Nagel print. Um, he actually did some stuff for Playboy, I think, magazine, but he would just do these hyper, just, these just look like nail salon posters. And I was so taken aback by this art style. I just think this looks so cool. I thought it was just some regular hair salon thing and it's actually, yeah, this, this renowned artist. And I found this at a Goodwill when I was doing a job in the area um, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to get that. And I forgot about it. And when I came back from the, the, the shoot, I was like, crap, oh, I hope it's still there. And I went back and it was still there. Um, this is such a cool piece. These are actually pretty pricey to get. And I'm very happy I got it. They're just, it's just a, such a striking piece. It just looks like eighties, nineties salon stuff. And, uh, I love it. Got a Wolverine. I'm a big Wolverine nut. 
uh, from childhood. Loved X-Men, loved, loved Wolverine the best. That is a Mulholland Drive print right next to it. Noe Banda uh, from the movie, if you've ever seen it. That is my favorite movie of all time. And I just discovered it and watched it for the first time just a couple years ago, just two or so years ago. And after finishing it, I sat on it for about two weeks. I couldn't stop thinking about the movie. And I was like, I think that's my new favorite film. So Mulholland Drive, amazing film. Then I had to get the poster. This poster has a funny story behind it. I didn't get to even uh, put, uh, put it up until you know a year or two ago. It, was, it used to be over here and I had all this stuff. You saw, if you see the old podcast set, it was up over here. But um, this Majora's Mask um, we got from the, you can see it at the bottom, the Symphony of the Goddess. So they toured around and did um, the orchestrated music of Zelda. Well, this is a huge poster. And what happened was we um, went to the concert at the very end. I saw this poster. I was like, oh, I love Majora's Mask. I'm going to get that poster. It was raining. I had to stuff this thing under my shirt and run down. I think it was Indianapolis is where we were at. Raining, running down the middle of the street, trying to rush to get the car we were getting downpoured on. And I remember, dang, was this worth it getting? This was kind of a pricier poster. When am I going to put it up? I'm so glad when I when I moved to this space, I got my own place here. Um, we moved our, our our house, me and my wife. Um, <laughs> I put this up, and I'm so happy. This poster is ginormous. It's beautiful. It's like the centerpiece of the whole game room. Um, Majora's Mask is my favorite game of all time. It's such an atmospheric, unsettling, kind of Twilight Realm weird game. It's just it, it has every weird thing. You're collecting masks. The moon's about to fall. Um, there's just so many freaky things. There's aliens. <laughs> there's just so much stuff. And there's giants. Like, I think they threw everything in this game, and it all fits perfectly. It's so unsettling. I love Majora's Mask. So, very happy to have that in my collection. Next up over here is Gurren Lagann. Love this anime. Uh, second favorite anime. There's Yoko there. And I think that was a print... Um, where was that? I think that was at a Cincinnati like Comic Con thing. I think that was there, uh, or that could have been an Arcade Legacy. They were selling this print at something. I can't remember where that was exactly, but love that print. This was the artist Angimoto. Angimoto, you can find him on Twitter and stuff. But uh, this is just a quote on Evangelion from the end of Evangelion. From now on, uh, you'll have to make your own decisions, and we can do it for you. I thought that was so cool with the angel drawing in the back. I just like posters like that that are, like, I usually don't even like posters like that. They have the logo and it's whatever, but this is so big and filled with art. That's the kind of posters I like versus stuff that has a ton of, like, promotional stuff and whatever. I like the more, like, kind of indie looking stuff, you know? But I also really love, I got this off Etsy, incredible print of Metal Gear Solid 2 key art. Um, I like Yoshitaka, is that, or was that... Uh, no, that was uh, Final Fantasy. What is, um, I forget the, Yoji something. Yoshi or Yoji something is the guy that does the Metal Gear um, art. Ah, oh, I can't remember his name. Yoji Kanawa, Kanawa something? Yoji Kanawa? That sounds right to me. Incredible artist. Ah, oh, just beautiful art. Some of my favorite art. That Metal Gear, or not Metal Gear, that and Final Fantasy, like those art books I had down here in the corner, Again, I think that's why, uh, I, I mean, those those are beautiful. So I knew I had, this is my favorite piece of Metal Gear art, is this one from Metal Gear Solid 2. So, happy to have that. And we will move up to the top here. Let me get on the old escalator, the gaming escalator. You all have to get a gaming escalator in your room. This is not complete. Uh, maybe one day I'll come back and show the whole thing, but this is the Final Fantasy VII Remake Player Arts Kai. These are still coming out. I'm still, I've still got, I've got a ton of them pre-ordered. I'm getting them all um, that are coming out. There is some cool stuff coming out uh, for this line, and I will definitely use this entire space. It might even get some in the back behind there. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Um, but we got Barrett, we've got Cloud, and we've got Tifa. Recently, a big uh, controversy in my video. A lot of people think she looks stupid. Does she look stupid there? I think on the shelf, guys, I think you're going to be... I think you're wrong. I think that Tifa looks really cool on a shelf. Um, I think her hair does not look stupid. I think her face or whatever, I think it looks awesome on this freaking shelf. So, very happy to have that. 
And then right under it is something uh, my friend Zach gave me. I think that was for pre-ordering from GameStop, Final Fantasy VII Remake. And it's like a Shinra staff card. I thought that was really cool. And it sat actually in the case. So the case, the cover just came off, put it on the bottom. And then you just stuck that in the middle and had a little, a little slot for it. Awesome. Cool little piece to that. Um, and then right here are these blind box, which I did an unboxing for, which I didn't know that that is a, the rare chase figure uh, is Cloud in the dress. And I actually have that. But I love that the old um, look of that and the polygons and stuff like that are on there. Um, but I, 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 I love this uh, shelf. I love what it's going to probably come out looking like here soon. But it's not complete. It's not ready to look yet. But over here you can look, and that is at the Final Fantasy and anime kind of shelf. Uh, we have some Kill a Kill figures, which sometimes i got to hide if people come over. No, I, I kind of just leave them out now and just say grow up. But those are my Kill a Kill um, figures there. Ryoto and Susuke, is that her name? Yeah, um, recently we watched that, but very funny, very fun anime. Let me move over here is Sora. I actually had Sora, Roxas, and Riku. But that is a that is Sora from Dream Drop Distance. And I just don't like any of the, of the Kingdom Hearts figures. <laughs> that is the only one that I love the face on, the look of them, the shoe. I think everything looks like Sora. All these other Kingdom Hearts figures that come out from other makers look terrible. I think it's the only one that looks good. And I did not like the look of Riku and Roxas after I got them. I think I even did reviews and said I just don't like the way these came out <laughs> with the faces. I just don't dig it. Um, so I sold those <laughs> and kept the one I liked. Uh, the Garen Lagan figure in the back, a little mech. These uh, Dragon Quest figure, Dragon Quest Eight figures are pretty pricey. What happened was I thought they I had sold them or donated them accidentally in a bag in my parents' garage. Had to rebuy them. I'd kept all the boxes, bought them again. Um, and they were only in the box. I could only find people that had them in the boxes, bought them again, and then I found these in the garage. So I found my originals. So I put my originals back out, sold the other ones. Or actually, I might have just kept this and sold my original because they were just, I already had them out and whatever. But uh, love those Dragon Quest Eight figures. This is the one Attack on Titan figure I own. It's him, uh, Aaron, flying through the air, which works out great. You can still see him everything that yuna figure is one of my first figures i have owned um and uh past like you having figures when you're a little kid i got that my friend brad got that for me i think in 04 for my birthday or something 03 and i really really dug it um and quick story on that i had a ex-girlfriend that came over at the time and saw that and I think I had that and one other figure. And I think they, her and her friend made fun of me or something. And I remember putting that back up. Like I put it in the garage. I was kind of embarrassed a little bit. And I remember getting it back out after we broke up and went, no, that's stupid. And ever since then, like, this is how I live my life. Like, <laughs> um, don't let other, like, that was the one time in my life I got kind of insecure about something. And I let something kind of, like, I let somebody, like, laughing at me or whatever. And it's like, you just don't need those people in your life. You need to, like, move on. <laughs> you need to get away from people like that. Um, and do what you enjoy. Like, don't let these things consume you. But I enjoy all these things. This whole game room, and I enjoy, like, collecting the stuff I like to collect. If people want to collect completes of, like, I want to get all the Wii games, go for it. Like, what makes you happy and stuff? So, like, uh, that figure just reminds me of, like, frick anybody that, like, gets in your way of, like, <laughs> what you enjoy. And I, sure enough, I put that back up on that TV and enjoyed that and... Sure enough, I got other girlfriends and stuff, and they didn't care about it. And now my wife does not care about it. And we just let each other enjoy stuff and celebrate what you enjoy and have fun. Um, but again, that was like, that had to be in middle school or something, so who cares? But just it was a good life lesson, and I love that figure too. I think it looks sick. So Yuna you know, with the two guns, she's so saying whatever, who cares? Those are Titus and Yuna from the Final Fantasy X Remaster. Yeah, Remaster. And the uh, Orin and the uh, Yojimbo are original, just play arts, not play arts Kai, back in the day. From like, oh, four, I think those came out. Um, but I love those. But I think the Orin, the arms broke, and I never got the Cal Calamari, and I want the Calamari figure. I wish they would have done Lulu and the rest of the cast. Like, ah, uh, I want to get more Final Fantasy X figures. But uh, I need them to remake Final Fantasy X. Please remake Final Fantasy X. I will get 
I'm going to have a, a, a freaking shelf look like this is what I, all I'm going to say. So, that is the game room. I hope you guys have enjoyed. This is a very, very long video. If you stuck with it, let me know in the comments. <laughs> Put a comment. I uh, hope I didn't bore you. Um, I like to see other people's collection and what they have in their room. Maybe you would, maybe you're the same. Um, but yeah, this is just, uh, I like to come in here when it's, when it's raining, when it's cold, I, when it's hot outside, I like to just enjoy the, the outside weather and stuff. But this is like my happy place where I like to come and just look around and just, I just enjoy the stuff. I just enjoy Metal Gear and stuff I like to celebrate and stuff. So, um, I'm very blessed and happy to have, uh, all this, uh, in my game room and let me know what cool game rooms do I need to check out on YouTube. I like the one guy that has the entire house. <laughs> entire house is a game collection. Uh, his kitchen's got games in it. I don't know. Thank you guys for watching and we're going to end on a, uh, what should we end on? Oh, how about a freaking K roll amiibo guys? If you don't have K roll amiibo, what are you, what are you doing? Uh, what are you doing? Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you want uh, watched. If you liked it, <laughs> if you don't like it, then take a hike, I guess. But if you did like it, that's me pointing at you to click like, subscribe, follow on Twitter, Dweebo YT on Twitter. Find out when we're going live, when we're doing podcast. We do a lot of fun stuff. And thanks for watching. K Roll Amiibo.